Good morning and welcome along to week three here at the Moda Super Series. And boy, do we have some headline acts in action for you this week. Before we get into this week's action, though, and preview what's to come, let's remind ourselves of how things unfolded on finals night on Saturday. The Group A record setter Daryl Pilgrim got off to a winning start on finals night. Another quality performance, clearly full of confidence, taking out 81 on the bull. As for Denny Older Coulter, a 4-1 win in his opening group game stood him in good stead to progress. Welshman Justin Smith was the first to book his spot in the final four, though, thanks largely to some clinical finishing throughout this match. Rob Collins came through in a decider against Dom Taylor to keep his hopes alive with this clutch 96 out. Pilgrim and high averages have gone hand in hand and he produced another in excess of 107 to get the better of Scott Taylor. Dom Taylor soon joined him in the semis. It was nervy, but he found a way to scrape through. Pilgrim seemed destined for glory and was the first player through to the final. Aided by a superb 1-2-9 out, he came through a decider despite leading 3-0 early on. He would meet Dom Taylor there, who averaged a ton in downing Justin Smith in his semi-final. You did say you haven't seen the three bulls yet. But can Pilgrim finish in style? Finish with a flourish. Game and Mr. Shot. P's perfect week has its fairy tale ending. Pilgrim, he's been so close to clicking for a long time now, hasn't he? And it all came together for him last week. Yeah, real breakthrough moment. Those monstrous averages, the nine darters, and that may be just all he needs. You know, it's not like doing it at certain times or doing it in practice, but when you actually get up there and, and you produce that kind of level, that gives you just pure confidence to go forward. And, well, it's a big time of the year coming up. Yeah, how much of a catalyst do you think that could be for him? Yeah, I think it could be massive. I think you'll have the opportunity to watch it back and reflect, and it just gives you so much genuine belief in yourself when you do it under the lights and under pressure. Absolutely. Before we look ahead to this week's players, just want a word on Luke Littler, who had another phenomenal weekend. He has, of course, got himself his tour card and booked his spot at the Alexandra Palace. He will also be contesting the World Youth Final. How much of an incredible weekend was that for him? How much of an incredible year has it been? Um, yeah, just just remarkable at the moment, isn't it? I mean, that that development tour has, has, has just been a standout performance from so many players this year. And the two standout, Gian Van Veen, uh, of course, a, a regular before he got a tour card here, and, and Luke Littler have been the two standout players for me, and I think that's going to be one hell of a final. Yeah, massive congratulations to our two-time champ here at the Moda Super Series. Surely we can see him go for one more before he gets his I, tour card, I right? think he's got to go for the treble, hasn't he? He's got Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Yeah, let's turn our attention then to this week's action. Fallon Cherrick, one of the head line act in action. Look, she put so much emphasis on the defence of her match play title. It didn't quite go to plan, but the way she reacted the following weekend at the Women's Series, averaged over 107, put in the second joint highest average ever seen at the Women's Series. What are you expecting from her this week? Uh, a lot, but I think this is a, again, it's a very important time of the year for us. She'll be Disappointed by the fact that she didn't win the women's series, she didn't win the women's world match player or defender or, or title, and I, I, I think sort of crossroads would be a bit too dramatic. But I want to see her really kick on now. She's now got a, a real big rival in Bo Greaves and someone that it feels like she's playing a little bit of a catch up to, uh, as all, all all the girls right now. Um, so yeah, she's gonna. I, I think she's gonna have to maybe reapply herself, become more dedicated. Uh, I'm fine. Listen, she's got the levels in the locker. Are we seeing them enough? I don't think so. But but that's down to her ability. It's not um, it's not a critique. But she is that good. 
that she's going to have to find that level more regularly to compete with, with Bo. Yeah, interesting as well that she said the last time she was here, just before the defence of her match play title, that it was her finishing that let her down. And we so often see that is a massive strength of hers, isn't it? Especially under pressure. Yeah, we've seen it so often. Uh, I go back to the, the Grand Slam against Gabriel Clemens. 1-4-1 uh, one one was just, just on a different level. She And again, she has, she has all the attributes in her locker to to, I think, take her game to another level. And we've seen Bo do that. And, and that's why Bo won the Women's Series and won the Women's World Match Play. Yeah, let's have a little look then at who will be joining Fallon Sherrick in Group A. As you can see, Adam Lipscomb, who's getting better every time we see him here at the Super Series. John Henderson as well. He's currently fifth in the Challenge Tour Order of Merit. Not gone to plan over recent months, but when you look at the performance levels it's taken to beat him, it's taken something pretty special. Yeah, and, and he's another one. I don't think he'd be particularly satisfied. He was the, the player that was a standout player that lost his talk card this year um, good to see Adam get a week that takes the pressure off a little bit he knows he's going to get two bites of the cherry but John Henderson another another great player that will be looking just at this time of the year to to find another level James Hurrell of course will be going to the WDF Worlds in December he will be looking now to start to really wind everything up for that uh, I'm, I'm Fallon as well it's, it's going to be it's a fascinating group yeah, and for James Harrell, it'll be important to put the disappointments of the Swedish behind him, won't it? Because he lost out in the last 16 of that one, despite averaging eight points more than his opponent in that. So he'll really want to put that behind him this week. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they've all, they've all got a great opportunity to to really put a sort of a, a stamp on the, the rest of the year because for, for a lot of them, a year probably would have been a little bit disappointing. And this is a, a great springboard to do that. Let's have a look then at the outright odds for this week's action and for Group A. No surprise to see John Henderson is favourite to go through via Group A. He really does enjoy himself on a Monday through to Wednesday here, doesn't he? Is there any value in any of the other players? Yeah, I don't think you can, it can ignore James Hurrell or, or Fallon. Um, I'm not sure Cantelau or Michaels or, or Adam Lipscomb are quite producing the kind of numbers you would think you would need to win this Group A. But, um, yeah, I mean, Hendo, it's a bit short for me, even money, um, especially in a, in a group like that. Yeah, Cantal has been going well on the Nordic and Baltic tour. Let's have a look then at the bet builder for this morning's play. Talk us through some of these selections that return eight to one. Yeah, these are the ones that are most popular on the exchanges at the moment. Lipscomb against Henderson. Uh, Henderson to win four two or better at five to six. Sherrick against Tara, one eighties over two point five. Both fairly prolific in that department. My only worry is, will the match go long enough to cover the 2.5? Lipscomb against Hurrell. Again, Hurrell on the handicap. He has to win 4-2 or better at 11-10. to 10. I quite like that. And you mentioned Lipscomb, the pressure's off him, because we do often see him coming into action in a Group C. How much do you think this could bring out the best in him seeing yeah, him from a Monday? I'm hoping it allows him just to relax and play with a bit of freedom, knowing that, listen, if I don't get through Group A, I've got Group B or Group C to rely on. And listen, he's a, he's a local lad, a local favourite as well. We'd love to see him qualify for Saturday night, because it would be bonkers in you. Absolutely. Who's your favourite, then, to qualify for finals night via Group A? Uh... Oh, I'll, I'll go Henderson. Yeah. Even though, even though I think the evens is too short, I think he's the best player in the group. And we've seen him play against Fallon on this stage previously. <clears> they <throat> often bring out the best in each other as well, don't they? Yeah, the, the tempo suits each other. They, of course, they're from the same stable, so they know each other very, very well. Very comfortable playing each other and um, yeah I expect them to, to to produce some good games this week and the last time we saw Fallon have a full week here it was to prepare herself for Blackpool what do you think her aims will be for the remainder of this year of course Grand Slam will be well within her sights she is now really high up in the women's series order of merit didn't pick up a title during the last block of events but played so so well what do you think her main aims will be for the remainder of 2023 yeah I think it's interesting that she's She's not sort of gone down the WDF route, maybe, well, maybe because of the qualifying criteria was such a mess. But I think that's a little bit, you know, one that she may have missed out on. Listen, it's, it's still a world title. Um, but I think for her now is to try and win a week here. Um, if not, it's all about preparation, like you say, looking towards the slam, all the other tournaments that are available to her. 
uh, and then January and, and Q School all over again. Absolutely. Her rivalry with Lisa Ashton has been one that we've all enjoyed over recent years. But Lisa has been playing at a level since Blackpool that has been so consistently high, really eye-catching, did well down under in Australia as well over the weekend. Do you think we could still see her pushing for more titles? Yeah, she played lovely in Australia. She won both events and looks somewhere back to her best. I know she's had a, a lot of injuries this year as well to, to try and sort out. Um, but make no mistake, a, a, a fully up-to-speed Lisa is a, is a challenge to Bo and Fallon and, and the rest of the girls. She certainly is. Right then, before we get the action underway this morning, our first game is Adam Lipscomb taking on John Henderson. And Henry caught up with Hendo prior to this morning's session getting underway. John, here we are again, back at the Super Series. The smiles on your face. You love it when you're down here, don't you? Well, I'm beginning to like it down here, yes. I've had a good record down here, so hopefully it continues this week. Uh, but no, it is. I keep saying it for the non-two colours. It's, it's a great experience to get a bit of stage, even television. So, no, I'm looking forward to that again, as I always do. So hopefully it goes my way. We saw you about a month or so ago. How's the game been since we've seen you last? Uh, it's, it's been all right. It's been steady. I've done a challenge tour, and I've done, I even went to the seniors in Reading, so that was a, that was interesting. But uh, no, I got to the final of the, the tour event, so playing well. Form's there. Form's good. I'm in a good place at the moment, so hopefully it continues this week, and we can maybe pinch the 5,000 this week. As you say, you've got memories of winning here before. Back into a week where there's a lot of players that you've played a lot either here or in other competitions in the past. I know, yes, I've, I've played Marino a couple of times on television at the Worlds and, uh, and on the British Open when it was in Satanta and, and obviously Marco twice at the Alley Pali. So I've got good records against these guys, but it's, it's a completely different format here. Best of seven, it's, it's hard, you've got to get off from the start. So it's going to be hard games. I know they're good, very good players, they're very experienced players. And obviously Fallon and James, are, they're experienced anyway and Adam being a local boy. So it's going to be hard, but I'm, I'm up for the challenge. Of course, you're here to win the 5K. You said you're here to win the 5K, but how good preparation is going to be for the World Seniors match play at the Barbican in a couple of weeks? Oh, 100%. That's what I've always said. I was always going to use Modus as a, as a practice to get my tour card back, and it, it's actually becoming a, a tournament that you want to win now as, as, as a practice session. But uh, no, I'm, I, I'm going to take this and hopefully play well and take it into York. Uh, as I say, it's a completely new experience for me next week totally different environment but I'm looking forward to it and hopefully this week the preparation goes well for that and hopefully I can go in and win both Well John, wish you all the very best this week, good luck Cheers, Cheers Henry, appreciate that, thanks Morning everybody, welcome along to week three here at the Modus Super Series, it is a week that has got a bit of an international flavour and it's a week full of players at the top end of their respective order of merits, we kick start with well the ultimate crowd favourite, John Henderson, the 15-year-old from Scotland, the Highlander, former World Cup winner. He'll be making his debut in the World Seniors in a couple of weeks' time at the Barbican Theatre in York. He takes on Adam Lipscomb, local lad from Portsmouth. There'll be plenty watching on throughout the course of the week from the Wicker Mill pub over in Porchester. A real local favourite. And if he progresses through to Saturday night's finale, there will be a bumper crowd here on the South Coast. And it is a week in Portsmouth that's all about being victorious for who is going to claim the glory here Game on. and guess who's back it's Danny Mack our referee here at the Super Series and talking about back Mace is alongside me in the commentary box very good morning to you 100. morning Henry morning everybody yeah back after a, a little bit of a break not particularly refreshed as I went to a, a wedding which was beautiful 140 congratulations to Daniel and Jade. I had a lovely 100. time, I think. <laughs> you didn't get anything the next morning to say otherwise. But this for a start from Big Hendo. 140. Back to back 140s. I think Adam, every time we've seen him, he's just got a little bit more comfortable. 140. He's one of those players that you'd call a work in progress in this competition. There's natural ability there, but every single time he comes here, you can tell that he does the hard yards away from the board. Absolutely. 115 left. 45. Johnny require 121. 11 and ball. This will be for a 12-dart break of throw in the opening leg. 
of this week three, series five. 86. How oh, good. Premier Wire 160. Star Pilgrim last week, pal. Just a little bit special, wasn't he? I have to say, I did find it ironic. I had a couple of days off last week, Ooh, and of course, John of Warren course, 35. it happened when I wasn't here. Yeah. The opening leg. Not only the, the nine data, but record-breaking averages. 29. Adam, requires 72. Adam here. Just been making a bit of a mess on the approach plate, but nothing wrong with that. Leg, Adam Lipscomb. And although it's a hold, that'll almost feel like a bit of a break. Yeah, Hendo so came out the blocks. A couple of one forties to start. Three missed darts, a double, have come to cost him in the end. He's the favourite to go on to win the group, even money as we saw earlier on in the piece. But in terms of the week as a whole, he's the favourite again. Perhaps not a surprise. He tends to be three to one. He is with the odds compilers to eighty-five. Return to Champions Week like he did in Series Two. Do you, do you think outside of of the success that? He's had here this year. He'll be a bit disappointed 16. so far with his year on the Challenge Tour. I think the start was very promising. He he won a, an event. He topped the order of merit. But I agree. I think the, the last couple of months, the last couple of cycles, not quite the Henderson that we're used to seeing. But this environment, I think, suits him down to the ground. He, he's been on stages throughout the course of his career. 59. I think the format suits him down to the ground, knowing everything's in place. He's one of those players that's very rigid in terms of his preparation and so something like this 85. will suit him yeah and i think i think it's at the perfect time and as well as he sort of the final preparations for that big event up at the barbican in york 125 so it's going to be the first max of the week not to be and so henderson to level up looking for 117 and Lipscomb, having already taken out a 72, will be wary of what he can do at around the 96 distance. But tops to level up. Game shot on the second Decent leg. start John to this Henderson. game. 15 data, 1-1. One, one. Third leg, Adam, to throw first. Yeah, game that on. match play in the Barbican. He plays on Saturday, September the 2nd. 85. Yep. Plays John... Uh, John Henderson plays David Cameron on the Saturday night. Four to seven favourite for that. 60. Where's Glenn Dowen placed that odds wise? Well, I can't find any outrights, but he's playing 100. Jim McEwen. Final game on the Saturday night. Jim McEwen's a two to nine favourite, 10 to three. Glenn Dowen. You can actually see him have a bit of a chuck on Friday, and he can. He's uh, certainly looking good. Henderson looking good, and the first shout of 180 from Danny McNamara. 100. A very soothing tone of voice from our Irish official. Forty-three. Thirty-two. Actually, John Henderson is favourite. I've just found the outrights to win the World Seniors match. But if you want to attend that, go to the Barbican website direct or dartshop.tv. Why there? Get yourself a ticket for Saturday night. Don't leave 34. it late because if John Adam Lipscomb does make Saturday night's final, tickets will be at a premium. Tots a hendo. That would have been for back to back ton plus outs. Now Pilgrim won last week at a 150. Lipscomb isn't going to find something similar himself. Colin McGarry is 50 to 1 to win that 40. World Seniors match play. Can't be worth a pound of anyone's money. Game on the third leg. John Henderson. First break of throw. Goes to Hendo. Fourth leg, John, to throw first. Game on. 
Ticking along nicely. 95 and a half average. Fumis starts at double, but Motor then came in the opening leg. Yeah, when we sort of dissect his performances last time out on the Challenge Tour, there was nothing sort of that stood out in this kind of sort of region, late 90s, mid 90s. Maybe it was just a, a bit of a just a slump in form can happen. But if you're going to find form, find it now at this part of the year. As we head towards September, we head towards the autumn when seasons come to an end. Q schools on the horizon. 99. And this is why I think the next Champions Week coming up could well be the best Champions League because players are going to have to play themselves into form at this time of year. And so we may 59. see peak versions of whoever qualifies through to week 13 at the end of October and the beginning of November. Maybe our last look 80. at Luke Littler for a very, very long time. Probably ever. But uh, do you see the uh, tweet he put out last night? 85. No, I don't have it. That's a good point. <laughs> well, mate. Yeah, he put something out about maybe doing it one more time to the tune of the Daft Punk 84. song. 84. Like There's it. some guy dancing in God knows what. Another one of them. Tingle would leave the ball. And it is going to be the middle of the diddle. But it's not going to solve 89. the riddle. Adam, you require 98. Adam Lipscomb has to get this. It will be a break back. Can still finish. Not now. 24. John, you require so for a 3-1 lead. And to really hammer home his advantage... Yeah, it was a big favourite before the off for this particular match, 4 to 11. Nothing for double 12, eh? 21. Adam, you require 74. It's a bit of a concern, the finishing from Henderson in this opening match. Just two from 10. Tops. 54. John, you require 12. That's only Adam Lipscomb's second data double in this match. Henderson back for double six to put himself free one to the good. One left in hand. Game Found free one Henderson. Henderson. And he is a leg away. The bookmaker's favourite for not just the group but the week from securing his opening rubber. Fifth leg Adam to throw first. Game on. Fifty-eight. Eighty-five. Coming up after this, it's going to be a first look at Moreno Michaels. We've not seen him around the tour on the circuit for a little while. He's going to take on James Hull, the England captain, former WDF world number one. Yeah, Moreno, I remember him back in... He played in the Worlds in 2014. 81. So he's been around a while, Moreno. He's one of our... ADC 40 invites. Yeah, some really exciting stuff going on with ADC Europe going on at the minute. Speaking to AT1. John Walken, who's pretty much in charge of, of the organisation and, and things like that involving the, the ADC in Europe. And there's a lot of really exciting plans going on. There's a couple of major competitions beginning at the end of this year and for the midpoint of next year in the Benelux region and they're talking to local regions about 75. having support in place so they can send their best players over to these competitions and and building some nice little acorns and foundations to grow, put it that way. Yeah, it's still very much in its infancy. 134. Already doing amazing things. From what from what I can gather, it's just the 99. tip of the iceberg. 44. What's going on underneath? Is Lipson going a loco? Down Four. in Alcapulco? Well, his stay in this game may 80. not be too much longer because Henderson comes back for 80 to complete the job. The bookmaker's favourite for the week is going to dart at top to secure his first win. 40. But that is now 3 from Adam 14 when it's come to the 40. doubling. 
And the average is sort of slipped to around where he's been in recent months, mid-80s. 30. Not punished. John, you require 40. Adam will be. Hendo loves tops. And the love affair John with that target and both John the Super Henderson. Series continues. John Henderson picks up his first win of the week, being Adam Lipscomb by four legs to one. He came in as the lofty favourite to go on and pick up the weekly title. He is kicked off with a performance which, in the scoring stakes, would be quite pleasing. But the four from 17 in terms of the checkouts is something to work on as the week goes along. Adam Lipscomb just didn't quite harp himself as many opportunities as he would have liked. Work for him to do. Coming up after the break is a first look at James Hovell and Moreno Michaels this week. So then, victory for John Henderson in our opening game this morning. The Highlander did miss 13 at the outer ring, but still came through 4-1. James Harrell and Moreno Michels are next up this morning. Harrell, of course, a beaten semi-finalist when we saw him here back in June. Sebastian Biawetsky getting the better of him on that occasion. To get his Group A campaign underway, then, let's get back to Henry and Chris. Thank you, Abby. Yep, our first look this week at James Harrell. From Morton in Marsh. This is a 23 gram mission dart. Marino from Rotterdam using a 22 gram custom made dart. As you can see, career best 2014 that was. Uh, 64 of the PDC World Championships. 
Well, we've seen the hillbilly here a fair few times at the Super Series, and we know one thing. He tends to qualify for Saturday night only once in his career here has he not done that. He actually played on the first, leg, first ever night here Robert. with the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Game on. Mason, I think that's nearly a year ago now, Mace. Now time flies. Yes, he's not done a lot this year. Has Marino been 60. very quiet? His peak year in terms of ranking was around 60. 2014. Played in the UK Open <clears throat> in 2012. I made the quarterfinal of a Euro Tour in 2013. 43. Tour card for quite some time. One hundred and thirty-four. My big concern, though, Henry, for Marino, is his highest ever average on television. One hundred and forty. Yeah, he's going to have to find levels way in excess of that to be competitive this week, and it is going to be a really competitive group. Four. Look at the likes of Henderson. Look at the likes of Show. Look at the likes of Cantler. Even put Adam Litzko and James Hole in that mix. If you're below par, you're going to get found out very quickly amongst this pool of players. 60. 60. Yeah, Moreno, a carpenter by feet. trade. Having to lay down the foundations this week. 140. 100. Well, it's been a solid 58. enough start for the Hillbilly, and he leaves himself 58 to take the opening leg on throw. And he's going to get a couple at top to do exactly that. 18. Doesn't go, and Arena so Michael's or Michelle's gets his first. Chard set it out shot 105. Trouble 15 would have harbored him a dart at tops, and so Hull's going to come back for a second Ginger chance to take 40. this opening leg. No score. That's five darts now. Missed to win the opening leg, and Michelle's has got the chance to capitalize on 67. It's going to be a dart in hand, and it's going to be a dart at tops. 47. Drag just below. James, you require 40. <clears throat> Bit of an edgy opener. Game shot of the first James leg. Harrell. James Hurl. Uh, takes the spoils in leg one with a 22 dart hold. Second leg, Moreno to throw first. Yeah, that World Game Championships. On. Moreno lost out to John Park. Three sets to two. 96. In 2014. Those two sets he won against John Park was the only two sets he ever won at the World Championships because he had a couple of cracks at the BDO World Championships, but there was two by 43. three nil defeats, one of them to a player in this group in John Henderson back in 2010. Yeah. I said, been around a while, hasn't he? 60. 60. He had huge success on the BDO circuit towards the latter end of the noughties. Well, regionally, he must be, he must be back playing a, a fair bit with some success to... 140. Have been given the opportunity to get the invitation. Well, he plays 85. regional Ginger league in the Rotterdam Rijnmond area in a pub called the Havenzijkt in the city of Riederkirk. As Hubble stares down the ball for the 161, and that would be the first haymaker finish of the week thus far. One hundred. James, you require twenty-five. 
the break in for 2 0, and it's a much improved leg by the Hill Billy. It's 2 8. Game well, it's not been a case of Hillbilly throw. rocking, but the Hillbilly is rolling in this game. He's into a 2 0 lead against Moreno Michels, who. Third leg, James, at the moment. Throwers. Game on. Just looking to settle on the stage. Yeah, James Harrell this year. Being on the Challenge Tour. 19th position. In the Order of Merit. Sixty. It looks like James Howell's got some shoes out of the loot. Little a swag bag. Three, three. If you actually look at it in terms of his performances this year, I mean Daryl Pilgrim's top in three dart average after fifty-three matches. James, uh, John Henderson. Second, 90.55. Pilgrim first, 91.26. James Harrell third, 90.37. So 100. His, his performances aren't really reflecting, or his performance levels are not really reflecting in terms of results by the looks of things. And 95. the same can be said for, for Hendo. I mean, Scott Mitchell sat in fourth, 90.20. No doubt we'll be watching today our commentary colleague. 26. Probably somewhere on the farm, isn't he? 100. Well, Howell looks set to race into 100. 3-0 lead. He's got the opportunity to set up. Michelle's has left himself a finish on 149, but you'd expect the hillbilly to leave it far more handier, especially after that first dart. As handy. Almost as handy as handy could get. Marina require 149. Be happy enough to be and down at 52 for 3 0. 60. James, you require 50. Put himself a leg away. Tops. How oh, nice a lie is that? 12. Tried to bump it off the barrel, Marino but he couldn't find a way 89. in. 89. 82. Game shot on the third leg. Moreno Michaels. Clean enough, wasn't it? 17 dart instant break back. Nice little 89 checkout. Fourth leg Moreno to throw first. Game on. Do you think James Hull was called the hillbilly? I'm just guessing by the shirt. You should point it out a little bit more. 96. I think Paul Nicholson coined it last time that his shirt looked something like a word search. 57. I think we're going to play a challenge with our viewers here today. See how many orange hillbillies you can find on the shirt. 53. And tweet in your answer to at MSS darts. We'll ask James and see whether he's got an answer. 140. We, will, uh, we won't give out any prizes. You can just have the novelty of feeling chuffy. One hundred. Marina you require one hundred and sixty-four. Well, he's got a bit of time here. Michelle's to level up at two apiece. Howell not really got going in this fourth leg. One hundred and forty. That one forty leaves him on double twelve after twelve, and now his average. Moves just a shade under 85. 64. Marino, you require 24. Do you know where Morton in, the fourth leg, in marshes? Henry, just checking your geography. Lovely part of the world in and around Gloucestershire. Yeah, well fifth leg, done. James, to throw first. Game on. Yeah, within the Cotswolds, Market Town. Farmstead on the moor is the translation. It's actually a very handy village cricketer, is James Howell. Is he? Could have done with him 96. during the ashes. <laughs> 
wonder if he's available for the Tour of India at the end of the year. Or the World Cup. 24. Mind you, there was a couple of wides with that visit. One hundred and twenty-five. Did you watch the football yesterday, the World Cup final? Yes, yes, and yeah, commiserations to the lionesses in that particular final. I doubt they're watching. One hundred and they're probably on a plane from Australia somewhere. <laughs> Although, if you are tuning in via whatever Qantas flight you're on, please do tweet us. But yeah, um, just one hundred team in the end. I think you look at. I was looking at the shape out of possession and Spain just looked far more rigid, looked far more in shape, whereas at times we... I don't know, you could, especially out wide, we were too narrow. It was just, we left them too many pockets out wide and, yeah, the, the better team won, ultimately. Not to be for Serena Wigman's Lionesses. But this is better for Michelle's, who's left tops after 12 this time, and the average is 89 and a half. Not sure where this has come from at two no down. He... Sixty-five. Marina, you require forty. Was uh, not looking comfortable. This will be a leg. massive Marino surprise Michaels. because his last two legs have been one in thirteen, and that was a fourteen dart break of throw. Six leg Marino to he has throw the darts first. to pull off a, a big upset. A massive upset when you consider the fact. That James Hubble 96. had two darts for a 3 0 lead. And at that point, Marino was averaging around 70. Well, the game is completely flip flopped, hasn't it? Well, yeah, he's put nearly, nearly 20 on his average. And Hull's gone in the complete opposite direction. 93. Yeah, if you do want to get in touch with this here, at MSS Darts, all one word, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, or X as it's now called. 58. And we will have the app open. You can tweet us direct into the commentary box with any comments or questions. 100. And we'll get our social team on it. 60. He is in a real spot of bother here, James Harrell. 85. Got to give credit where credit's due to Marina Michels. To quote Mark Webster, he's stuck with the task. And by doing so, he has halved himself. 136 six darts seven. for the match. It's 127 for the game. It's the bull. One hundred and two. Amazed he's gone for it. Because one eighty here from James Harrell. One hundred and one forty in the end, but there's still pressure on the twenty-five. Now he is only going to get shot. one at double two Marino to win the match Michaels. by four legs to two. And James Hull spurn a couple of darts with a 3 0 lead. And Moreno Michels completes four legs on the trot to get over the line. An average in the end of 87.77, four out of seven on the finishing. But nine missed darts at double, including two for a 3 0 lead. Came back to cost James Hull in the end. Coming up after the break. Is he finish? No, he's 54. It's Marco Cantela up against Fallon Sherrick.
win so far this morning. Then for Hendo and Michels, next up, Fallon Sherrick returns to the Super Series stage. Of course, she was be a beaten semi-finalist the last time we saw her here. Chris Landman getting the better of her on that occasion. First up for her, Marco Cantela, who we've seen in action on the Euro Tour on a number of occasions in 2023. Before we get into this one, though, let's hear from Fallon Sherrick. She spoke to our very own Henry Deacon a little earlier on. Fallon, back at the Super Series, back for another stint. How are you feeling ahead of this week? Uh, I'm really excited again to be back here. I'm really looking forward to this week and, you know, hopefully I can perform even better than last time. As you say, you've been here a couple of times in the last phase, got close a couple of times. Is that itch getting scratched that you know you're getting closer towards winning here that you need to feel as if you've got to get over that line now? Yeah, yeah. The fact that I'm getting closer and closer, you know, eventually I'll get over that line. But yeah, no, I was just taking step by steps and, you know, uh, perfecting my game as I'm getting there. And then when I get that step, kind of taking everything that I can. But yeah, no, getting that little scratch at the start now and just kind of eventually getting there. It's my main goal. How do you see this week? Because there's a lot of players that you would have played before either here at the Super Series or you would have seen elsewhere. This is a highly competitive group. Yeah, um, I think when I got asked to play this week, I didn't know who was in it. So I was like, yeah, yeah. And then obviously I see who's in it. I was like, oh, OK, so I've got some really good competition. Um, but it, I wouldn't ask for anything more because, you know, these players are going to push me and that's what I want. I want to be pushed. I want to see, you know, at what extent I can progress my game. So what better than throwing me in this week? Last time we spoke, we spoke about how you wanted to play the Group A, get the whole week under your belt. How did you find that last time? And was it an absolute yes with making sure you try to play the full week if you possibly can? Yeah, no, I thought, you know, I got a bit tired towards like kind of the end of the week and stuff like that. But it definitely helped my game. So, yeah, obviously, when I got the opportunity to come back and do another week, I've taken it. And, yeah, I think it's just a perfect practice to go in for a week um, because then it's not just a couple of days. You get a full five days. Well, I wish you all the very best this week. Fallon, good luck. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very the much. The Queen of the Palace hoping to be crowned underneath the church this week. She takes on our first ever Finnish player here at the Moda Super Series in Marco Cantler, a veteran of the sport. Been playing since 1989. As the man from Vaski in Finland. It's a small village in the south of the country. And we've seen him many times across many world championships and other events on the Euro Tour, World Masters darts and the BDO slash WDF. And Fallon Sherrick, the Queen of the Palace, back at the Super Series. A couple of tilts at it last time, made Saturday night on both occasions. Able to make it past the semi-final stages. Made a final before here at the Super Series, but the one thing she hasn't done yet is to claim a place at Champions Week. And that is the objective that she is looking to achieve over the next first six days. First leg, Merkel to throw first. Game on. Imagine Marco being around the circuit for so many years. Have you had any encounters with him, Mace? I don't recall ever playing him. I've known him for years. He's, put it this way, there's not too many tournaments he's not played in. He has been around... Uh, a long, long time and still, still a very capable player. A seasonal average or a 12 monthly average of approaching 87. Fallon's 12 monthly average. Not too far away from that, mid 80s. 100. Eighty-four point one eight, the seasonal average for Alan. It should be a a fairly competitive game. One hundred and forty. In terms of the odds, they went Marco eight to eleven, even money Fallon. One hundred and nine. Darts like that makes those odds look a little bit silly. But can Cantler kick off with a ton plus checkout? He's got double 14 for one, two, one to start. The chance comes and goes. Fallon for a potential 11 dart leg. Double 16. Game Flying Jonathan start for the Queen of the Palace. Sure. An 11 darter to lead 1 0. Marco will be celebrating his 
Second leg fell on to throw first. First Game day with us here on Thursday. Ninety six. Welcome to the Super Series. Well, this is the first time that Fanny Sherrod's been here at the Super Series and we 16. call her the former Women's World Match Play champion. And we know that she has a laid-back nature about her, but not retaining that title is going to smart a little bit. 134. We need to play for, though, towards the end of the year in terms of the Women's Series, in terms of the order of merits and qualifying for both the Grand Slam and the Alexandra Palace. 140. Because Bo Grease is top of the, or won the Women's World Match Play and top of the Order of Merit in the Women's Series, the place at the Grand Slam will then go down to number two in that particular ranking order. 140. And similar will be the case when it comes to World Championship qualification. 125. Until positive signs from her last time, and we're seeing an incredibly good start here. Even 131 after nine, this time with the darts, and Cantler has got nothing 99. by way of reply. 32 after 12 for 2-0. 100. Fallon, you require 32. That's the first wild dart we've seen from her all day. 20. And Cantler's going to get a go in the 76. 76. To get the break back. It's going to be two in hand at double eight. Fours. 72. Inside, and Fallisher wants that exact eight. target. Two twos. And he goes. 17 dart. Hold of throw. 2 0 lead. Very, very comfortable. Third leg, Marco to throw I mean, first. Some start to the game, game from off. both. 107.36 for Fallon. 109.33 for Marco. One hundred. He's been around so many world championships over the years. His first was at the Lakeside in 2005. Beat our good friend and colleague, Tony O'Shea, by three sets to one. Hope you're well, Tony, if you're tuning in. And then lost out to well, another friend of the Super Series in Simon Whitlock by three sets to one in the second round. 45. 44. Bit of a loose one from Fallon. 100. Not played too much since that. 100. Women's World Match Play and Women's Series. So she probably comes into this nice and fresh. 100. Forty-one. One hundred. Fallon threatening the double break of throw, leaving one seventeen after twelve. A counter can leave it a bit more handy here. Sixty. Fallon, you require one hundred and seventeen. 19. We'll give her a dart at tops. 77. Only. Marco, you're 115. Of the wire away. This has got to go for Cantala. There's the 60. 
He needs tops. 95. Dips Fallinger just below, and so share it for that double break. Game's Three on nil. The third leg, Fallon Sherrick. She's in cruise control of this game now and a leg away from victory. And it means that the three games we've seen in the first round well, of fixtures Fallon could be one quite convincingly. A 4-1 win on. for Henderson against Lipscomb. Michelle's coming back from 2-0 behind to beat Hubble 4-2. And Sherrick here on the cusp and has the darts to complete a whitewash 100. job. And all the winners throwing second. Ninety-seven. Yeah, we just checked through all of Marino's TV performances, and that was his highest ever average on TV. He's had a an eighty-three, one hundred and twenty-five, and a seventy-eight, and a seventy-nine on his three TV appearances. Beat that by some margin, didn't he? With the eighty-seven, seventy-seven. And as she's approaching the winning line, still averaging well into 100, 105.74 right now. One hundred for the match. Fell in your and bar, for four nil win. What about setting up from here? How much you'd love a ton to leave her favourite double 18? 96. Yeah, had to come away. Look far too inviting to find another trouble and bust her score. This has been a very, very good performance indeed. 45. Fallon, you're Tops complete 40. the job. Game shot. And Fallon Sherrick completes Fallon a 4-0 victory with an average of 105 and a half. The Queen of the Palace has set out a statement performance to start. Have a look at those statistics on the right-hand side of your screen. 105.47 the average, 4 out of 8 when it came to the finishing. Marco Cantler averaged 97 himself and only had 4 darts and a double, but he missed a lot of them. Fallon Sherrick then off the mark, a 4-0 victory. That's the end of round one. Coming up after the break is James Hubbell up against John Henderson.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series. Fallon Cherick has just treated us to our first three-figure average of the week, 105 and a half in getting the better of Cantilever 4-0, as you can see there. Wins also for John Henderson in our opener and Michels in game two. Next up, John Henderson and James Hurrell return to action. Hendo with a comprehensive 4-1 win in his opener, despite missing 13 at double. These two did meet on the Challenge Tour earlier this year. Hendo winning 5-2 on that occasion to guide you through our fourth match of the day let's return to mason h thank you abby well we were just dissecting that wonderful performance from fallon and it's well it's a bit of a statement henry isn't it she's putting in numbers the like of which we haven't seen in this competition but we have seen her card elsewhere in recent times and i spoke to her earlier on this morning and she said First things first, I want, she's played a lot of Group C, a lot of Group B darts here in the past, but she wants to start playing the full week here at the Super Series John if she can. Rofers. And Game on. She feels like there's just a little bit of an itch to scratch in terms of Saturday night and in terms of qualifying for Champions Week because of what she's done and because of what she's achieved. 85. We, there is that little bit of pressure on her shoulders, but, that, but that's warranted because of performances like that. Exactly. We've got high expectations because... What she just did. 130. You no, know, they're, they're not one offs. Although I am absolutely stunned by the statistic that we've 41. never had a female player in Champions Week in the Super Series format of this competition. Yeah, we haven't really had too many 100 female players, have we? To see Rihanna Sullivan have a have a stint here at the Super 100. Series. One hundred. I'd love to see Bo for a week. Mm. See where she could take her levels. One hundred. Time for Howell leads in first to a finish against the darts. In terms of the odds, they had John Henderson as the four to seven favourite to James Hull, the James five to four outsider. One sixty four to get the first leg done. In the space of four visits, it's the bullseye for the hill, Billy. One hundred and thirty nine. John, you require one hundred and forty five. Henderson isn't going to find a haymaker finish of his own, and so Howell will come back to. A crew that opening 50. leg break. James, you require 25. And it's going to be double eight to do exactly that. Double four. Game and it is one nil to Hubble. 15 dart leg to kickstart proceedings against the Highlander. It's like a leg, James, to throw first. Game on. Henderson, who, as you mentioned in the previous game, will be at the World Seniors match play at the Barbican Theatre in York. 100. Much as he wants to win here, and he does want to win here, he's had the taste for it before, he wants to do it again. This will be a good bit of preparation for that particular tournament. 80. I think you're pleased that you've given that one a bit of a duck, don't you, Mace, of Hendo in the field? Uh, not really. Don't play well, I lose. Nobody dies. 84. No, you just average 91 and then get drugged by Gates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was 10-9. 85. I think she lost to the champ. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. 100. So, Howell here setting up for a 2-0 lead and backing up the break here. Crude in the first of a hold in the second. Looks like a little bit of a change of the equipment and setup of the hill, but compared to that that we've seen in the past from him. One hundred. Jindy requires seventy-six. Seventy-six for two now, and this is a a similar start. It's 
What he made game shot the against second Marino game. and from two nil up. What did he miss? A couple of darts, didn't he, to to lead three 0 and then it all went Thurlow John to terribly wrong. Rupert. But that's back game to back off. fifteen darters for James, and very comfortable in doing so. One hundred and thirty-four. There's a Henderson. The scoring game against Adam Litzkin was okay. The issue came by way of the doubling. He missed 13 darts at double in that 100. opening match. One hundred and forty. Here's a question for you, especially regarding after what Daryl Pilgrim did on Saturday. If we had a Super Series pound for pound ranking system. We're going to both agree that Luke Little is at the top of it. 43. Yeah. Where would you put Daryl Pilgrim? Ninety-seven. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good question. You sort of put him around. Sort of Graham Musher John, your level, wouldn't you? And how good he was in certain periods of his Super Series experience. Certainly enters the top 10, doesn't he? For me. 50. Think of current players now, considering he's qualified for Champions League three times. Of those eligible to play in this, I'll put him in the top four for sure. 130. Matt Clark is going to have to be high Daniel up on the Bar list now. 80. Yeah, just by his consistency. Tots a Hendo to get a leg on the board. On the Back to 2-1 it is. Henderson. There's only a holder throw, so he's still got to try and find a break at some point. And Howell has the darts here to re-establish that two-leg cushion. Game on. Nothing over five visits so far. And this one. Three consecutive 15 darters. 95. Combine 45 darts of the first three legs. Simple maths. 140. Maths. Two plus two is four. 60. He is a rocking. And a rolling back-to-back -back 140s at the beginning of the fourth leg for John Henderson. We're beginning to see a pattern in Hurrell's play. Nine. Not the kind of nine we want to see, Henry. We did see a nine last week, but not quite like that. Basically, we found the formula towards good darts here at the Super Series. 60. The top three performances this year... Scott Mitchell has been sat in the sea that I'm in now. Wowzers. Twenty-eight. John Uruguay, 161. But there's a real point about stamina with Hubble here because this is the second game in succession where in the middle portion he's just beginning to find a dip. Yeah, he's just going missing. Ninety-nine. Is he trying to Push too hard from leading 2 0. Although we have to give some credit to the Hendo. He responded with a, a 15. 53. And a potential 14 darter here to level things. Single 12. Tops again. 42. But has got the luxury of time. Eighty-five. John, you require twenty. The two-two. No He's going to get more time. Andy McNamara, referee, just having to double check. Double ten is the worst double for a referee because of the angle is positioned and where their eye line is situated. 
Sometimes I've got to have a little bit of a look at course. We had an incident with Danny McNamara and Colin Osborne back in Series 20. 4 where he had to just double check things after the dart went in the double. Now, double five is easier for a referee. Is it easier for Hendo? 10. James, you require 130. But well, this is to arrest the slide. The bullseye. He's been nowhere in this leg. 91. But he's not going to win the leg, at least not at this 10. visit. Game shot of the it's happening leg. again John to Hubble. 2 0 up. Peg back to 2 2. Fifth leg, John Highlander. To throw first. Game on. Moving full steam ahead. Sixty one hundred ninety five. Eighty one. One hundred. Eighty three. Well, Henderson. Holding on to throws so far in leg five. That took a horrible deflection. 41. 100. Bit of a slow burner leg, this one, but Hubble first to a finish. 140 for Henderson, though, leaves on a much more makeable 65. Hubble needs to find something here on the 137. 80. Johnny requires 65. Good recovery with the final dart, but 25 for tops for Hendo. Too good. It's double four. 60. He goes inside, and so Havel James, you require to put himself back in front. He then have the darts to win the match. As he stares down Tots, two in hand. Now double 15. A shake of the head. A grimace 42. from the Gloucestershire man. John, you require and Henderson four. is back to take the lead for the first time in the match. Ooh, that's a blocker. No score. Didn't move. Change Surprises 15. me. Needed to change his line of fire. <clears throat> Can he find double four? Wow. Eleven. Chasing the four. doubles. We're into the eighth. Visit of the leg. Game shot of the fifth leg. John well, Henderson. I don't know about you, but Henderson has won that in 22. It's not going to feel all right, but he's a leg away from the match. Sixth leg, James, who throw first. Game on. Back to back. 22 dark legs, giving him 3-2 lead. Trailed 2-0. 140. I assume you're not much of a Taylor Swift fan. No, don't even know who she is, pal. 39. Well, now his both players have got to shake it off. 
100. Forty one, more of a Alicia Keys, Rihanna kind of guy. Oh, now we're talking. Now we're talking. One hundred and five. I was actually listening to a bit of John Farnham on the way in this morning. Press the wrong button on your radio. <laughs> 57. Radio 4 kind of guy, aren't you? 56. 156 to send us all the way, but he has got the luxury of time because now it's Henderson's turn to go missing in the match. 41. Is there a radio station called Tory Boy? Is there. <laughs> Maybe you could start one. 140. James Irwin, 150. To send us all the way. What's your radio station be, by the way? 59. Are we allowed to say on air? <laughs> oh, what a time. Oh, what a time. James Require 56. And suddenly the pressure's on Howell to save the match. Double 16. Oh, 24. Dear. John, you require 44. Oh, we love a bit of Motown. Can Hendo find four tops? There Game you go. Shot. And Hendo gets over Henderson. the line. 4-2 in the end. For the second time today, Hurl led 2-0 and then lost the next four. So it's Henderson making it two from two, and he tops the table. Up next, Fallon Sherrick takes on Adam Lipscomb.
Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team of the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Well, Fallon Sherrick put down a real marker in her opening game this morning. A real statement win, wasn't it, over Marco Cantella, averaging in excess of 105, pinning 50% of her darts at double. What can she produce here against Adam Lipscomb, who missed six of his seven at the outer ring in his opening game? To see who picks up the points in this one, let's get back to our commentary team. Thank you very much, Abby. So, Fallon Sherrick came out of the traps to some blistering tune. Is now about how she can follow up here in game two. Was Adam Lipscomb? It was a for slow Collins start to against to John Robert. Henderson. But what we have seen from him Emo. here at the Super Series and his record in Group B and Group C campaigns illustrate this: is he gets better as the groups go along, and because he's playing the week, can he be playing one hundred? If he doesn't win Group A, two groups, he has got that little bit of time to work into things. 121. Yeah, you don't hit the panic button too early in a Group A. <clears throat> Go on, joining us. 43. For the first time, the winner of this Group A, straight through to Saturday's 59. final when we complete the group on Wednesday. Players two and three go into Group B. B, where they're joined by three more players. That's Thursday and Friday night. 59. Three from five go through. Players four, five, and six go into Group C, which is now Thursday and Friday afternoon, and only the top two go through. 100. <coughs> Giving us a six-player field for Saturday night, where they'll be split into two groups of three. Play each other once. Top two give us our semi-finals. Semi-finalists. And the winners, of course, meet in the final. Winner taking away five thousand pounds and sixty taking their your place one hundred and nineteen in Champions Week where the winner takes away a very nice twenty thousand pounds. Or in recent ninety nine Adam Little one hundred and sixty one twenty thousand pounds. Joe twenty for the ball. For one six one in a leg that he has been second best in for large parts. 20. Has to move across. Too far across. Game shot on the first leg. Converted last time. Hand. Sherrick's on the ball. One nil. And coming in to second leg. Adam to throw Group first. C on Thursday and Friday afternoon will be Sam Cromwell, Darren Johnson, and Scott Baker. Thursday and Friday night. Group B: Sean McDonald, Ryan Finesse, and Scott Marsh. It's been a while since we've seen Scott here. I don't think he's actually played in Portsmouth yet. He played the last full week in 16. Southampton. Yes, that's right. Remember that because me and you just kept swapping positions, didn't we, throughout the course of the week? One hundred and twenty-five. You were secretly doing some testing down here when I was taking I was. your place in the comms box. Eighty. It's a secret Mace Mong mission. <laughs> close, close as I've ever felt like James Bond. Fifty-nine. More like Brooke Bond. <coughs> Halifax Bond. <coughs> The name's Mason. Chris Mason. Fallon needs a big turn here. Gonna stay up. 
100. Adam Mirror Choir 139. Disappointed after finding the trouble 20 with Dart 182 left. That's double 17, I think. 105. Ballinger Choir 150. And the computer only clogged when it was too late. Fallon Shirt 157, not going to happen. And so we ask the eternal question split or hit? 81. Adam, you require the 34. rarely hit double 17. The King least hit Sean double on the dart Adam board, but of course gone. finds it with dart one. But isn't it ironic that it's the least leg used double throw on the board, but it feels like every single time someone goes for it, they find it? Sixty. That's the first leg that Fallon Sherrick has dropped today. She went five in a row after beating Cantler by four legs to nil. Well, this has been a. I don't like to be overcritical, but this has been a, a bit of an issue this year. She's put in performances. Like we've seen in match 96. number one today, and then struggled to just back them up. 137. We have four representatives of the ADC this week. 100. Marino, Michels and Marco Cantela, Sam Cromwell and Scott Marsh. Yeah, they'll be competing for the ADC belt on Saturday afternoon. 85. Many congratulations to Tony Wood for picking up that particular title at the weekend, beating Dave Prind by nine legs to three. 42. One hundred and thirty-four. So, Sherrick leaving 44. 55. Ballinger well, Aquarius 44. 100. 30. I can only presume she's gone Adam, for, 113. Eight for a double 18. <coughs> Left things awkward here. On double seven. 77. Fallon, you require 14. But Pins pins it. on the third leg. Fallon, sure. Back in front. Everything going with throw so far. Check two onto the Four good. Adam to still the to do. In terms of game what the on. odds compiler said before the game got underway, Fallon, sure, was the one to two favourite with the bookies. Adam Lipscomb went off at six to four. 100. Yeah, but if you are having a flutter, it is 18 plus and be a gamble Oh, is it 140? Yeah, it's in. But we're going to see another one of those bizarre ones that come out and then go back in the trouble 20. 125. No one needs to hear me scream that loud at 11 o'clock on a Monday morning. No, I'm still a little fragile. Well, that one's definitely in. It's Fallon beginning to make her move. 135. Palipskin leaving himself first to a finish. Sherrick all about the setup to try and accrue the break. Everything has gone with the darts thus far 42. in this match. 141. 59. Fallon, you require 139. Be the biggest finish we've seen so far today. It's not going to happen on this occasion. 59. Adam, you require 82. Ball for double 16. That's incredible, incredible from Adam Lipscomb. An 82 finish as plum as plum can get to level up at two apiece. Yeah, nice and clinical. 14 dart it. Game on. 140.
55. One hundred and thirty. Fantastic start to the leg. Tom forty followed by one three seven. Piling it upon Lipscomb. Sixty. Eighty one. That was almost a white flag waver in the leg. Check for the luxury of time for the one four three. Fifty nine. It's going to come back for eighty four for a three two lead. Lipscomb giving nothing 40. by way of response. Well, you require eighty four. On throw. Been solid enough so far. 52. 140. Fallon, you require 32. Game shot on the fifth leg. 16 dot hold. 3 2, one away. Six leg Adam it's fair to, to say that first. Fallon's been more threatening on. on the Adam darts than Adam has on the Fallon darts. Not seen a break so far in this match, 40. but that dry start for the Porchester thrower could set in situ the possibility of Sherrod getting it done here and now. 41. Not punished. One hundred and eighty. That's his first of the contest. One hundred and forty. Oh, that's his first of the day. He didn't hit one in his four at one defeat. One hundred and forty. To John Henderson in match one. Well, maximums have been kind of at a premium prior to this match. We saw. Free for the day. We've seen as many maxes in this match as he did in the other four games combined. Adam to send us all the way, he's got six and one for one, Adam Lipscomb. 91. 100. Well, a little Adam bit of pressure. 50. Just to stay in the match. Game shot on the sixth leg, Adam Lipscomb. His doubling was an issue in his opening match. One from seven. Much better in this one. Three Seventh from six. Seventh and final leg, Fallon to throw first. Game on. And his winning legs have... Well, on throw, he's averaged 100. Because he... One hundred and eight. He's averaged 16 darts, 14 darts, and 15 darts. But it's 81. been against the throw when it's been an issue, and he's in huge trouble now because Sherrick's kicked off Max on throw. 82. He has had a nine dart nine this year, of course. On the challenge tour. 95. The thing is, she is a likely candidate because when when she gets in that zone, she can hit maximums like nobody else. And we know what her combination finishing can be like. 55. Fell on your corner. 39. Sensibly starting upstairs. 83. <clears throat> 100. Well, and you require 56. Well, 20 or 16. 84. One dart left to get it done. 16. It would have been. Adam, you require 170. 
this would be some way to win the match, but not going to happen now. But Fallon's back. 45. To make it two from two. Fallon, you require 40. Tops is what she's looking at. And Tops is what she gets. And, and Fallon Sherrod goes two from two. Getting the better of Adam Lipscomb by four legs to three. Every single leg going by way of pro. And Fallon Sherrod following that 105 and a half average against Marco Candler. Follows up for 90.86, but importantly, joins John Henderson on four points in the group. The two favourites bought for many are the two players who are beginning to dictate proceedings here. Michels against Cantler in the all European battle after this. Moreno, Michels and Marco Cantel are up next this morning. Michels coming from 2-0 down to pull off a really impressive win over Harrell earlier on. Really grew into that match as it went on. These two have met once before. That was at Q School back in 2019. The Finn got the win then. To find out who comes out on top in this one, let's get back to Chris Mason and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Abby. So the final game of our second round of fixtures for day one here at the Super Series is our all-continental clash. Just past breakfast time, isn't it? Cantler up against Michels. Finland against the Netherlands. And first leg, Moreno to throw Finland first. A famous win against Game the on. Netherlands at the PDC World Cup of Darts back in the day. Former semi-finalists in that competition, the Finns. 134. Good knowledge, Henry. I thought you were going to... Tell us about a meeting in football. If it was going to, it would have to have been in a qualifier. 
55. Finland have only ever played at one major European tournament. That was the Euros back in 2020. And their first game was that 100. tragic game in Copenhagen involving Christian Eriksen. One of those sports moments where you know exactly where you were where you heard news of that. 60. Forty-five. Well, Marino made a, a slow start to his opening match against James Hurrell and then reeled off some really good quality stuff, including back-to-back -back legs of 13 and 14 darts. Ended with a 140. full two win in an average of... 87-77. Marco was beaten 4-0. But did average 97.21 in defeat to Fallon. Who averaged 105.47. Marino, your war, 82. <coughs> well, that would have 62. been to have reeled off five Marco, your legs war, in succession because he won the last four to beat James Hovell. Cantler, 146, to just get off the board for the day. Yeah, one to win five on the spin, the other to lose five on the spin. 70 left. 94. Oh, double 10. Really hold. And a 1 0 lead. A little awkward. Game Brilliant. On the first leg, Moreno Mikels. 17 darts for the opening leg. Second leg, Marco to throw first. Well, I Game on. did fear for him just because of his lack of match play in the last 12 months or so. As, I, as you found after you dug 100. a little deeper, he has been playing in a lot of regional tournaments. And we've seen it before, haven't we, where oh, players just find something on that particular stage. Well, like I said, if you can't play here, you won't be able to play anywhere because the conditions are near perfect. 134. Hence why the players that have played here speak so highly of the event. 43. Amazing thing, we need to a point in about five, ten years' time, we will have actual world champions who've gone on to win world championships after playing on that stage. 121. I think we may have seen one in Luke Little. I think we may see another one in Owen Bates. I really do rate him really highly indeed from your neck of the woods in the West Country. 134. Yep. Marco, you're Another top prospect. It's all about that transition from amateur to, to pro. You know, you require 144. And dealing with the levels and the disappointments, of course, not. 120. No one's winning everything, are they? And I, I can't see that changing because it's such a level playing field now. Game shot on the second leg. If you're going to win your head. first leg of the day, that's the way to do it with a ton plus out. And a 15 dart hold. Third leg Moreno to throw for your devils at one apiece. On. 100. Eighty-three. 
Disappointed after the first start of that visit, Cantler, as we have a look at the side-on action of Moreno Michels. 60. Very short backswing. <clears throat> One hundred and thirty-four. Well, they averaged over ninety-seven in defeat, and right now, as I look at the numbers, ninety-seven twenty-five for Cantilla, one hundred and one point zero five for Marino. Good start from both. Right on cue. <laughs> the Mason curse has struck 81. again. Yeah, it's quite, quite loopy, isn't it? 59. Usually, not tall for a Dutchman. Hence, the throw's got a little bit more loop than we're used to seeing. Marino require 148. Needs a travel. 59. Marco you require 103. Well, his previous leg win was of a ton plus checkout. Is he going to make it two from two in that particular category? An unusual route on a 103. 95. Marino, you require test 89. test our spotter out this week. Certainly is. Rather him than me. Oh, that's a loose one. Needed a 20 for the ball. 49. The criminal error of eight. missing the big number. And so Cantler back for the break and back for 2-1. Break accrued, break found, 2-1 to the fin. Fourth leg, Marco to throw first. Game on. Eighty. Great recovery. After a a rare real bounce out, as in metal on metal, 61. rather than a a fallout. Yeah, Marco from the small village of Varsky, which is unreliably informed. 95. It's a small village in the south of the country of Finland. I've got to be honest, my Finnish geography isn't as good as it once used to be. But 81. actually inside the village, their oldest building is a, it's pink, massive pink building. It's at a place called, and I hope <laughs> that this is pronounced correctly, it's called... <laughs> 59. I'm thinking, do I pronounce this on telly or not now? It's called... 26. Vesage Arj Venti. Okay. It's the oldest apartment building in the village. It previously served as a guest house and as a residence. It's now a French-style vintage shop. Nice. I've been to 140. Finland for the Finnish Open. Beautiful place. Went to Lapland, that's in Finland. Yeah, went 100. there. 100. Marigold required 120. Holiday when I was a kid. Of course you didn't. That was skiing vacation, was it? Oh, no, I've never skied in my life. Oh. Could you imagine me skiing? No, it would go downhill, wouldn't it? <laughs> 76. Yeah, we actually... We went Marco over one 32. year in their winter and it didn't really get light at all. 92. Game shot on the fourth leg. Marco but it Cantler. might be light at the end of the tunnel for Cantler. He leads 3-1. 
Funny. Went five legs Just without like to winning a leg. Effects. Now he's Game on off. three on the spin. Yeah, going back to your point, they live in that part of the world where in the winter they get no sun whatsoever, but 96. in the summertime, around about now, they get no nightlife whatsoever. Correct. Like most of Scandinavia, absolutely 60. beautiful country, immaculate. Big fans of hardcore rock, though, aren't they? Fifty-seven. You ever seen their Eurovision entries? <laughs> They're a little bit on the exuberant side. Of course, you watch Eurovision. <laughs> of course, you do. A glass of mermaid gin. 41. Do you dress up? No, 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 no. I don't go that far. 100. There's people, isn't there, that do Eurovision parties and dress up like the, the country's act. I believe so. One hundred. Ninety-five. I've actually competed in the Eurovision Song Contest 56 times, and they've only won it once, back in 2006. With an artist called Lordy and a song called Hard Rock Hallelujah. That could be a oh, big score, no, Hallelujah, for Cantala. Nice. See, Marina require 153. Save the match. Oh, Marco. Got off the 99. mark with a 105 finish. Can he rack, wrap it up with a 120? There's the 60. Tops to climb the ladder and to complete the win. 80. Marino, you require a 54. Well, you had the eye line of how close that was. Game shot on the fifth leg. Moreno. Moreno. Holds to extend the match to a sixth leg. Sixth leg. Marco but to Cantler, throw first. who has the darts Game on. in that leg. One hundred. Just to finish off that Eurovision point, then they won that contest. They actually broke the record for most number of points in the competition at the time. 123. Although I don't think anyone's going to beat Ukraine's total of a couple of years ago. 60. We actually had a, a Eurovision type song contest here at the Christmas Do, didn't we, in December, Mace? Yeah, I don't think any of us would be winning Eurovision. 135. Well, this game is potentially... Before that visit was swinging back in the direction of his shells, but that's a big visit from Cantalup. Ninety six. Eighty one. Marina, you're one hundred and forty seven. Just liable to that odd dart slip, isn't he, here and there into the one and the five, Marco. 97. Marco, you require 137. Good pressure, this leg from Marino. 50 after 12. If he does convert this solid leg, he will, of course, have the darts in the decider. This will be back-to-back -back wins from Marino behind. Marino, require 50. 
And this is how the Super Series can change on a pinhead because we were looking at Cantelo as possibly as good as getting the job done. And he may 13. be now because Michelle has missed Arco two to take 78. us all the way. For a first start, which means two at double twelve. And the Finn's perfect start. Match, well, he gets off to a start. He gets his first win in the winner's enclosure. He beats Moreno Michel by four legs to two. Doing so a 90.12 average. Four out of eight on the finishing and a 105 out on the back of a defeat to Balancheric in the first game. Cantler is on the board. Right, round two. Been and gone. Heavyweight battle coming up after the break as John Henderson takes on Fallon Sherrick. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we have just completed our second round of fixtures and Marco Cantela has picked up his first two points of the morning. We can have a little look at the results so far and Chris Mason. When you have a look over these results, it's Fallon Sherrick who really does stand out. Yeah, she's been the, the most convincing so far, certainly in, in terms of numbers with that wonderful 105 average to open her campaign today and back that up with a, a 90 plus but also Cantley lost with a 97 and has just won 
with an average over 90. Yeah, Fallon Sherrick has had the two highest winning averages so far. But as you mentioned, Cantela, really unfortunate in that one. Only had four darts at a double against Fallon Sherrick. Such was her brilliance in that game. She's up next, taking on John Henderson. What have you made of Hendo so far? Because he has won his opening two matches, but he's also missed 24 darts at double. Yeah, that's going to be a, a big concern. And, you, you know, if you have a match where you miss the odd couple of doubles, it doesn't really sit in your mind. But when you've had so so many darts at a double, he'll be aware. I mean, it should be a, their, their actual numbers stack up quite nicely in terms of their Super Series history. They're averaging both just over 88, so it should be a, a competitive battle. And it just sums this game up perfectly, doesn't it? 24 darts missed at double, but he's still got the highest checkout of the day so far <laughs> with that 117. Yeah, I mean, his scoring looks on point. So, he, like you say, if he just tidies up the, the back end of legs, he's going to be... Well, he's the favourite for a reason. And James Hurrell, he's lost both of his matches 4-2. It's been rinse and repeat, hasn't it? Because in the first match, took a 2-0 lead, looked really, really good. Same thing happened in game two. Yeah, the, the matches were almost identical, weren't they, in terms of quality as well in the opening two legs of each match. He's looked a million dollars and then just either switched off or he's, he, he may be just forcing the issue a little bit too much, trying to, trying to take it to another level rather than stay at the level he's at to get to 2-0 because so far that looks like it would be more than enough to go on and win the matches. It, in fairness... Um, Moreno played beautifully from 2-0 down, back-to-back -back 13 and 14 dart legs. Um, but, yeah, James has got work to do from here. Yeah, and for Fallon Sherrick, of course, she's up next. Her two matches so far as we can have a little look at Moreno Michels with his 4-2 victory over James Hurrell. It was a superb comeback from him and a real good way to settle himself. Shows the mental strength he has because when you find yourself 2-0 down to James Hurrell, things can spiral quite quickly. Yeah, and he's not been playing darts at a particularly high level, especially in the last 12 months or so. He's sort of been staying local, playing in local competitions. So, you know, I was quite concerned because his, his level of play prior to that that wasn't good, but he's obviously been putting in the graph because he's playing all right. And Fallon Sherrick continues to do Fallon Sherrick things because, as we mentioned, she has had the two highest winning averages of the day so far. Her finishing in that first match really was spectacular, wasn't it? 50% check Yeah, she, listen, I'm not sure how much she's played in the last week or so, but sometimes when you do, you know, sort of put them down for a while, you come back, you can't wait to play, and this can often be the result. And she, she looks fresh. She looks very confident. You know, the odd stray one here and there. But if this is what she's like with a little bit, you know, a little bit rusty, what she's going to be playing like by the end of the week. And the next match, it is a real blockbuster tie. Who do you fancy in this one? Well, you probably look towards Fallon, wouldn't you, on the, on the way she's played so far. But we know Henderson has also got some levels to his game. Absolutely. Right then, let's get back into the action and hand back over to Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Abby. This is a heavyweight battle as far as the Super Series is concerned. Fallon Sherrick up against John Henderson. These two do have previous when it comes to the Super Series. Both played in week 12 of Series 2. It was the week that John Henderson would go on to win. He beat Niall Cullerton in that particular final to book his place. First leg, John, to Rovers. Champions Week. Game on. In matter of fact, in the semi-finals of that particular week, week 12, Henderson beat Fallon Sherrick by four legs to one. It was a high-quality encounter. Henderson averaging 99.39, taking out a... 130 checkout, 14 dart leg to get over the line, whilst Fallon Sherrick averaged 90.92, had a couple of maximums to her name, and one from three on the checkouts. Where would your 10p be going then? In my pocket. Uh, based on the passages of play that we've seen so far today, you'd probably say Fallon Sherrick. Endo has shown glimpses, but not enough yet no he's averaging 190 around 83 for the day so far 57 john you're acquiring 98 fell on about 97 but we know endo can 58. reach 
serious levels. And he's doing so in this opening leg. Tops after 12. 55. John Uruguay, 40. Bend the wire with the second dart. Game Finds the a double leg, with the John third. Henderson. Henderson is on the ball. 15 dart to start. He leads Fallon Sherrick by a leg to nil. Second leg Fallon to throw first. Game on. Ninety-seven. Ninety-five. In fact, in Super Series meetings, it is two-one to Henderson. We mentioned that semi-final in Week Twelve, but early one in that week. Henderson and Sherrick sharing the victories in that particular group B. 95. 45. 100. Yeah, no meetings on the challenge tour. I'm quite surprised at that. 100. Well, their paths may have crossed at some point. Must have made each other on the exhibition circuit, though, a number of times. Yeah, absolutely. 95. Alan, you require 125. But their Super Series stats are very, very close. 49. In terms of John, you require 160. running averages. Check out percentages, etc. Forty-two. Fallon, you're quite annoyed not to get a dart of the double there. Fallon, well, she's sticking with tops. Fifty-six. John, you require seventy-four. Seventy-four for the break of throw and a two-nil lead. Going to be a dart. A tops for the break for John Henderson. 34. You mentioned earlier about the... Well, and you require how both 20. players are prolific in terms of 180's hit. Let's let this double 10... Ooh. Slide down the side. No. No score. Yeah, they played a similar amount John of matches in the last 12 40. months. 180's from Henderson, 221. Fallon, 216. Game shot on the second leg, John Henderson. Henderson gets the break though in this second leg, leading 2 0. And this is considerably below the Fallon Show performance Early that we saw throw first. earlier Game on off. in the day. Well, that has been a, an issue with her, her game this year. It's just 36. backing up the the good performances. The, the, the good performances have been there, but certainly not. With the regularity of 135. last year. All about harboring that consistency. Well, there's been added pressure this year as well from a certain Bo Greaves, who's. You know, Tr Trina was the original sort of trailblazer, wasn't she? 140. And then Anastasia. And then, of course. Lisa's been a stalwart in terms of sort 60. of the levels they've they found and then Fallon took it to another level and now Bo has taken it yet to a completely different dimension. Twenty seven. Very much like what Luke Littler's done in the youth game. Now seemingly beginning to do in the seniors game. He has secured a tall card from January. 29. And he's got a lot of darts to play. He's got the World P well, the PDC World Youth, the WDF World Youth, the WDF 47. World Championships. 
Well, he's got PDC a, World Championships. Well, he's got a decision to make now, hasn't he? Because we believe you can't play in both of those tournaments. So... I mean, I sort of could understand it. 100. Before 152. when... The B, then BDO World Championships would follow the PDC Worlds, but not now that it's... It's before he, he's not got his card. I mean, he has got his card, but it doesn't sort of materialise until January. Fifty-seven. Alan, you require seventy. Got to go. Twenty for tops. Big dart, big moment. 54. Just dragged Don't below. Require 94. Yeah, number from five. Could have won the last two legs. Could be leading 2 1. Mm, he's got a decision to make. Went the right way for me. 54. Double 18. Alan, you require 20. All over the wire. The last time, this time inside. Over adjusted. 10. John, you require 40. The 3 0. Feel like we spent half of the day involving these two players on this target. Now for 10s. Game shot on the third leg. Henderson John is 3 0 Henderson. up. Averaging in the mid 70s. We didn't expect this type of game Fourth between the two Valentine players who first. have dominated game the on. top of the table up to this point. Someone's O will go. One hundred and thirty-four. One hundred. Anderson. Stolen the darts in this fourth. Seventy-eight. Be on the cusp of a 4 0 victory. The only 4 0 scoreline we've seen so far, Fannin Sherrick is on the right end of against 125. Marco Cantler could be a complete reversal of those particular fortunes as Henderson closes in. 121. Oh, Fannin should go ball here. Oh, didn't even find the, find the 25, which would have given her an opportunity of. 47. Trouble 20 and ball. Trouble 75. Trouble 17, double 12. To wrap it up, full zip. 18 tops. To complete a 4 0 victory, and, and John Henderson. Henderson gets the better of Bannon Sherrick in double quick time. So Henderson, a hat trick of victories for him to kickstart the week, doing so an 81 24 average, 4 out of 10 when it came to the finishing. Coming up after the break. It's the England captain, James Hovell, taking on the Finn, Marco Cantela.
James Hurrell returns to action next, looking to put his early morning frustrations behind him. Twice he's led 2-0 and twice he's gone on to lose 4-2. Can he break that cycle here against Marco Cantella, who's steadily going about his business? Two averages in the 90s so far for the Finn today. To guide you through all the action in this one, here's Chris and H. Thank you very much, Abby. So, England against Finland here at the Super Series as the captain of England, James Hubble. First leg, James, stage to and throw first. Well, it's been Game on. a case of him starting games well, but then almost the wheels falling off as he heads towards the latter stages. It's like tinkering of equipment, just a change of the colour of the barrels. From the clear to the fluorescent yellow. In terms of what the odds compilers make of this match, James Hubble goes off the favourite at four to six. Marco Cantler, the eleven to ten outsider, but the Finn starts with a max. James, the big favourite, eight to thirteen. So in this one, Marco six to five raised a few eyebrows. Forty-three. Well, maybe what James has got to do is go to no down and then win four-two. Reverse psychology. One hundred and forty. Again, starting a leg very strongly. Starting the match very strongly, should I say? One hundred. Now, only a couple of games in, but I think we're beginning to wonder what kind of... I think we're beginning to know what kind of level Cantler is going to play over the course of the week. He's going to be steady. Average 97 in that defeat to Fallon Show. Back that up with a pretty much 90 on the nose against Michelle's in a 4-2 victory. As I said, his seasonal numbers are... Are tidy enough around eighty seven. Double twelve for Ton Topper to take the lead. Margo your war one hundred and thirty seven. And so for an opening leg break, Cantler wants one thirty seven. Has he considered tops tops? He did consider tops, tops, did the fin. Yeah, it's the right play for me. Games you require 12. Bigger target. Game shot of first players, leg. of course, James very adept Hull. at following a, a lead dart. If you hit one double, you like leg certainly to feel like first. you'll follow it in with Game another. On. Sixty-eight. Actually, got some more background intel 59. on Marco Cantler. Uh, thanks to our friend here at the Super Series, Dean Moss, for this information. Works the handyman at the. To Luca Hotel in his one hundred and forty village of Vasky, and it's actually the venue where they play the finish leg of the PDC Nordic and Baltic Tour. Good stuff. One hundred. Don't forget, tickets are available for Saturday night www.dartshop.tv The tickets are free. It's just a £2 booking fee. You can come earlier now on a Saturday to watch the ADC Belt Series. Or why don't you come and attend the Vault event here on Saturdays. I think it gets underway or doors open around 11, don't they? Something like that. Or if you do have the facility to scan a QR code. If you scan that code on the screen, that will take you straight to the booking page. 
Talking about vault events, we have to say congratulations 95. to one of our very own in Justin Bradshaw, who won an ADC vault event last week. Apparently, he was the only player there. Well done, Justin. 41. Marco, you require 138. He, he did beat a player who's playing today, of course, in Adam Lipscomb in the semis. And beat Jenks in the final. And Jenks won it on here on Saturday, I think, do believe, in the afternoon. He's back. 98. Uh, Cantler leaving tots to level proceedings up at one apiece. Howell can only try and set up on the 176. Yeah, if you look on your social 16. medias, add amateur dart Marco circuit require 40. or Google darts atlas, all the details to get involved in the ADC events and maybe qualify for a trip here to compete. Game on the second leg, Marco Cantella. Uh, Cantella levelling up at one apiece for the 17th dart first. leg. Game on. Uh, two solid holds. Don't forget to give us a, a follow on our social medias. If you're watching outside of the UK on YouTube, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell and give us a thumbs up. We do appreciate your support. Indeed. Any comments, do 80. send them in. We are having a look. Yeah, at MSS Darts. Any questions or comments? Henry has the Twitter app or X app open. 85. The best comment last week was someone comparing Dom Taylor to a looky likey of Lionel Messi. Okay. 60. I think they had a few beverages at that point. One hundred and forty. I was a bit Lionel on Friday night at the wedding. The Super Sunday was a couple of days early this week, was it? Sixty-six. Well, the missus was watching the football. I was doing the Sunday roast. I've had mace cooked for me, and the food is <laughs> the food 60. is on point. And then I had a nice six-hour drive. That was unpleasant. All to be in my company. One hundred. Well, I did have the. Football to keep me company. And then that was a disaster with Chelsea losing. 140. But the woes continue at the bridge. So Howell 48 for a 2 1 lead. 140. James Irohar, 48. Good pressure from Cantela. Level 16. Game's on the third and leg. first James time, Earl. and it was almost an ironic eye roll from the hill, Billy. I will lead 2-1 in this England-Finland clash. Four Merkel to throw first. Game on. Now, let's address that Euro Tour game, because Marco Cantela was involved in one of the most, shall we call it, infamous matches of... 2023 against certainly the longest. <laughs> and the thing is, Cantel is not particularly slow. Certainly, he was a, a bowler. He'd sort of have him as medium paced, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think people gave him the wrong end of the stick in that particular game. Although, there was plenty of comments on social media about that game. And apparently, Apparently, you could have listened to the undertones, teenage kicks, eight times in the time it took 100. Liam Mendel Lawrence and Marco Cantler to play two legs. I don't know who came up with that particular statistic. 
It was our own Abigail Davis. Okay. 60. So much so that Paul Nicholson was reading War and Peace during the game. Fifty-five. What was the score in that match? I can't remember. Cantler won by six legs to two. Oh, so one hundred. Oh, yeah, that's right. It didn't even go all the way. Wowzers. Well, I don't know whether you saw that incident involving Liam Mendel Lawrence and Barry Van Peer yesterday at the Swedish Open. I I've heard about it. Have you seen it? Barry's not happy with the hey, pace of the won. game. And so he kicks off a leg after Mendel Lawrence won the leg before with a max and he's stared down at the watch that he was wearing on his non throwing hand. 105. There was an American guy called David Schneider who was ridiculously slow. Would throw a dart and then step away and a few ghost throws and then 50. address the Oki and step 96. away. Almost impossible to play. See the guy someone in the States almost had a fight with. Say no more, Henry. 44. Say no more. Marco, you require 116. For Desmond. It won't be 2-2 two, two if Howell can find the 52. 76. James, you require 52. Of options here. The ops for 12 and tops. Game the right call. The fourth leg, James Hurl. Well, he's finishing now. Well, so far, has been superb. Three from four. Fifth leg, James, to throw first. However, we've been here before. Game James Hurl in a two-leg lead. He's been in this position in every single game so far today. He was 2-0 up against Michel. He was 2-0 up against Henderson. And lost both of those games by four legs to two. But this time he's got to three. Is he going to buck the trend? The first time today, the hillbilly's on the hill. 55. Averaging just shy of 90 at the moment, James. A below par performance for Cantler, has to be said. He's averaging 85. Prior to this game, his lowest average of the day was just over 90. Fifty-eight. Abel closing in. One hundred. Tun leads him on a finish, and he's going to get time, no matter what happens here. That's unlucky, but it's not really you feel going to count 40. in the. Long and short of Gender it. Hull doesn't have to attack this via the ball's eye. He can plot his own path. 66 remaining. Two. Single 16. 86. Back at tops with three in hand for a very tidy 4-1 win. If it's the tops with his first dart, he will have an average in excess of 91. 140. Five, is it leg to finish off? Havel, 40. One in tops. He's been in positions to win games previously. But can he finally cross the finishing line at the third Game time shot. of asking? The answer James is Hurl. yes. James Hull gets the better of Marco Cantler by four legs to one. The Hillbilly on the board on Monday morning here at the Super Series, doing so with an 89 and a half average, four out of seven when it came to the finishing. As for Cantley, well, that was below par in comparison to what we've seen 
previously from him today. An average of 84-23 and 50% on the doubles, but he only had two attempts at it. Right, next up, Lipscomb Michels. Adam Lipscomb and Moreno Michels are next to go head to head. Lipscomb losing out in a decider to Fallon Sherrick last time out. Michels giving a relatively good account of himself. He has two points to his name with two averages in the high 80s so far to see whether he can move on to four or Lipscomb can get his first win of the week. Let's get back to the chaps in comms. Thanks, Abby. Yep, Adam, only won so far today without a win. Well, hoping. To put that right here. First leg, Adam to throw first. Game on. Here's Danny McNamara, our referee for the day. Referee for the week here. 140. Super Series. Great to have him back. Charlie calls to Finn having a, a well earned breakaway. Oh, well-deserved breakaway. He's uh, done a lot of hard work for us here as uh, Charles. Yeah, and he's just done a month stint, hasn't he? 140. Brilliant referee. Even though in Binks were here last week. 190. Max Michels, the dulcet tones of our Irish official. 60. One hundred. Adam require one hundred and sixty one. Fifty. 
57. Ninety-nine. And 104 for Lipscomb to take this opening leg with throw. Double 12. 80. Moreno, you require 78. Hit a dart at tops, and that's not in the way. 38. Adam, you require 24. So Lipscomb afforded another opportunity at double. Now along for double six. And he just nudge across. Too 18. far across. Marino, you require 40. Four darts at double for Lipscomb have come and gone in this opening leg. Can Michelle's punish on double 10? Real blocker. No yeah, score. Deflected into the Adam, you double 15. Six. A reprieve for Adam. Game shot of the first leg. Adam Lipscomb. Right down at that part of the board. He's at a double 17 today and a double three. Second leg, so right Dan Saf. First. Game on. Couldn't be much more Saf. She's having some trouble up north. 58. Forty. One hundred and nine. Max and Michels is second of the max. Still finds himself one hundred behind, despite the couple of maxes. Fifty-seven. Before the off, they went ten to eleven. Adam. Nineteen. Moreno, four to five, so very much a, a pick 'em game. Forty-eight. Alan Sherratt takes on James Hurl in our match to follow this one. Sixty. Moreno, you require one hundred and fifty-eight. Charles to level up has got six at one five eight. 58. Squares up for a ton upon his return. Lipscomb can only try and apply the surmountable pressure. 57. Moreno, you require 100. Tops to level up. Level 10. Game shot on the second leg. Moreno, he's a friend. 1-1. One, one. Third leg, Adam, to throw first. Game on. 85. Now, at the beginning of this year, Michelle's won a big national tournament called the Utrecht 59. Darts Championship and was the Dutch National Super League champion, which is the Dutch equivalent of the county darts system with his team... Good and region bar. I hope I've got that correct. And he plays in a team which features PDC tour card holders Danny Van Tripp and Damian Mole. But they also feature 46. players that we've seen here recently Wesley Plazier, Joey Tenberg, and our friend Patrick Vanden. Bugard. Bugard. 45. Okay, well, that's a tidy team, isn't it? No wonder they won the league. Put it this way, if they're walking up, you're 96. feeling a little bit scared. I did once play in a Super League team with myself, Peter Everson. 140. Wayne Mardle. Well, this is, oh, this is an incredible Super League side. 100. Eighty-one. Even Tony David played in our Super League team. 
60. Adam Urquhart, 91. Andy Hayfield, another England international. 51. Marino you require 140. Goes up for tots. Michelle's back for 140 for the break of throw and a 2 1 lead. And one of them would have left double 10 again. 100. He's put a bit of Adam pressure. Adam require 40. Adam, only one from five on the doubles. Aim shot the third. No leg. drama Adam at all. Third consecutive hold of throw. The one Fourth leg, Marino to throw first. Holds of throw have come in a seventh visit. Neither player been able to find that real killer edge. 60. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it looked like he was going to... 75. Oh, hello. Robin Hood. It looked like he was going to come down and then stayed up and knocked one out. 60. Eighty-six, fifty-nine. Oh, that's a third match. Easy. Oh, my Forty-five. Marino, you require one hundred and five. The two-two. Triple fifteen. Would have given him a dart at tots, but he has got time. Thirty-nine. One hundred and as much time. Marino, you require sixty-six. That's a great first start. 30. And they are both very close to the wire, but Lipskin has got the break opportunity. If he has Moreno's number, 118. So, double 18 76. to... Moreno, you require 36. Bring us back level. Double 9. Inside. 28. Adam, you're oh, made a two. bit of a mess of this leg. Double 18. Open bed. Six. Marino, you require eight. Now, oh, this has been a strange leg. Still not over. Game it is now. Leg. Marino, two, two. two. It's going to be one of those games first. where Game on. the winner's just going to think about the win. They're not going to try and dwell. Oh, my. He's done it again. 29. And have a look at the way that that went in. It's pierced through the flight. He's not going back to the table to put a new one 60. in. Maybe using the almost self adhesive like flight that you can you just squeeze back together and doesn't need to replace it. One hundred. It certainly looked like it actually pierced through the flight rather than going the stem. Well, you can see it. The first yeah. start there in the five. One hundred and twenty-five. Forty-five. That's the second such Robin Hood type shot. The Lipscomb's had in two 41. legs. Forty-one. We've seen some bizarre stuff in this game. One hundred and twenty-five. Fifty-seven. 
145. Adam, you require 164. So Lipscomb first to finish on 164. Another one of them will give himself a dart at the bullseye. Not to be for him on this occasion. 80. Moreno, you require 126. And he'll be back down to the 19s for Moreno's checkout. 126. Needs to find the treble. Doesn't do so. So he's not going to half himself a dart of the bull. And it may be where Lipscomb ends up at the end of this visit. Yeah, should get at least one dart of the ball. It'll be double 11. 62. Moreno, you require 68. Break charts. Two in hand, a double four. Now down for two twos. Game the free two. And Michels Beatles. is now fine for the match. Yeah, that's our first break of throw in the game. Six line Marino missed. to throw first. For Adam to Game hold. Up. 100. In terms of winning the group, we say the maximum you can lose is three matches. 60. It will be three defeats for Adam if Marino can hold here. 60. And you feel like it's the type of group where we're looking at Henderson and Sherrick and thinking they're probably going to pick up a lot of wins against uh, the rest of the field. May not have the type of group where Moreno Blom lost his first four games and then won 11 in a row 60. to pick up success. That was a dramatic afternoon. Needed Lee Cox to beat Wesley Harms 4-0. He did exactly that. And Blom was on the balcony. 45. Head in hands for most of it, but the sheer release of joy when that final dart sank was quite the picture. 60. A couple of darting birthdays today. Adam Hunt, happy birthday. And Mark Pritchard, who is the manager of Michael Smith. Happy birthday, 140. guys. 140. We see Adam Hunt here at the Super Series in Series 5. 125. Marino just 96 points away. We're moving on to four points and into position two. 29. Marino, you're acquiring 96. For the match, for the win, by four legs to two, it's going to be two in hand, a double 18, and Moreno and Michels match, Moreno makes Michels. it two wins from three on his Super Series debut. Getting the bet of Adam Lipscomb by four legs to two, and his miserable start to the day continues. Michels, well, he missed 11 darts, a double in that one. Three maximums, the scoring is okay, but work to do on the finishing. He's two from three. Next up, it is Sherrick against Havel.
Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where Moreno Michels has just got the better of Adam Lipscomb by four legs to two. We can have a look at the other results so far today. James Hurrell last time out picking up his first two points of the day with a 4-1 victory over Marco Cantella. We can have a look at what that does to the league stand-ins then handing into our 10th game of the session and it is John Henderson, who leads the way on six points as things stand. As I said, game 10 of 15 up next, and it sees Fallon Sherrick take on James Hurrell, the Queen of the Palace, with the opportunity to join Hendo on six points with her third win of the day. And it's Hillbilly looking for his second victory, having come out on top against Marco Cantela last time out. Sherrick has delivered our only ton top in average of the day so far, but there was a noticeable drop off in her performance level last time out against Hendo. What can she produce in this one? Let's return to Mason H to find out. Thank you very much, Abby. So, the two mid table players Fallon going to toe to toe here, Game and on. as far as the those compilers are concerned. Well, they pile on Fallon Sherrick, 8 to 13. She is to win the game, whilst uh, James Hole is the outsider at 6 to 5. One hundred. What would be your assessment of James's day thus far? Mm, I'm sure 100. he will be pretty disappointed as we had a look at his challenge tour numbers so far this year. His running average is in excess of 90. <clears throat> Where today he's had averages of 79. And 89, so he's probably he's 100. <clears throat> probably running sort of five points below where he would expect to be. Yeah, averages of, well, 80, 80, and last time out was a massive improvement and closer to where his his numbers are. 89, 59 is average in the last match, so. 60. He'll be buoyed by that performance. I won't be very buoyed if Sherrick can take out the 1 4 3. Double 16. That is superb leg, from Sherrick. Sherrick. What a start from Fallon Sherrick. A 1 4 3 to take the opening leg, leg in the space of 15. Game on. And the hillbilly has been hit with a haymaker. And Fallon at her absolute best is so good at those type of finishes. That we mentioned a, a little earlier. Just seems to find those big finishes with ease. 96. Well, we're looking at, at James Hull's numbers, but if you actually put it in by way of comparison of what we've seen from him at the weekend at the likes of the Swedish Open, it's not perhaps too much of a surprise. Lost out in the last 22 to Henrik Schweberg. Then... Paced his way through to the last 16. Average 75 in the last 32 game against Michael Blom. And then lost out to the man from the Faroe Islands, Jan McIntosh. Average 90 and a half in that one, but lost 4 3. 83. 45. Faroe Islands, one of those weird places where. We all count it as a country, but it's actually a principality within, I think it's Denmark, isn't it? As a matter of fact, if they applied to become 100. part of FIFA now, they'd have their application rejected. I'll have to take your word for it. That's something 140. I know. Too, too much about. 137. Good pressure from Fallon. And she have back-to-back -back big finishes. 97. Only needs the, the one treble in this combination. 17 for the ball. Bullet is. Ooh. 102. 
We're for a Angel while away from two 40. fantastic back-to-back -back ton plus finishes, but Hubble to level up is looking at tops. First one grazes the wire. Second one drags beneath. 20. Share it's going to come back for Elling the break of throw and a 2 0 lead. Two eights. Game two nil. The second leg, Fallon Sherrick. Solid enough stuff from the Queen of the Palace. 32 darts to complete the first two legs. Yep. Two for legs, three on the throwers. doubles. Game on. Ninety-six. Fifty-eight. Forty-five. Just leaving herself a little vulnerable on throw. With a couple of troublous visits. Eighty-one. I will head downstairs in the next visit. Of course, Tom would leave 163, which isn't an out. Yeah, he will run for cover now. 59. Another trouble. Eighty-three, would be useful, but not that one. Well, she took the one four three out. She threatened the one two seven. What's she going to do with the one two nine? How's Hubble going to set up? Eighty four. Poorly. Fell your wire one hundred and twenty nine. Should have been far more promising than that. Triple twenty for the bull. The bull for three nil. Ninety four. Jane's require one hundred and nineteen. Double 20. 43. I'll only require 35. Uh, back we go to double 16. Well, the only two darts she's missed in this game prior to that were at the bullseye. Game but she needed leg. only Fallon two Sherrick. invitations to get over the line in that leg. 3-0 Fallon Sherrick leads, and it's looking very comfortable, it has to be to said, for the former match play champion. One hundred and forty. Media World Trophy champion as well, of course. Her first major trophy. And that tournament in twenty eighteen being 59. held at the Guildhall in Preston. And Dowan also won that competition that year. Sixty. He told you about his Premier League triumph yet? Once or twice. I know he's watching on from Tenerife. Very good morning to you, Glenn. Well, it'll be afternoon. Is he in Tenerife? Of yeah, lucky for some, isn't it? Must be earning too much money. 64. See if we can get a Tenerife week, shouldn't we, in the middle of the winter? 64. Get some winter sun in. 41. Be enough expats to make it happen. This is better from Hubble. 140. Second 140 of the leg, but it's the score is in the middle. That's a worry. 140. James require 97. 
Who's going to leave tops? 57. All Fallon can do is apply a bit of pressure and hope. And she's doing exactly that. 140. James, you require 40. Double 10. Mitch Shevok breathing down ball his neck. James Hurrell. Howell finds the double 10, stays in the game at 3-1, but Sherrick has the throw here in the fifth to complete the Fallon job. to throw first. Game on. Sixty. Ninety-six. Fifth on forty. One hundred and forty. Now, if Fallon can convert this lead into a win, she will join Henderson on six points. Eighty-seven. A live table. But Henderson is up next against 93. Moreno. A win then will see him pull clear again at the top by just two points. 85. And then take on Cantler in the final game of the session to try and complete the card and top the table at the end of day one as Sherrick. 100. In a cram and yet another 140, but. He's herself on a finish. Howell can only try and set up to save the match. Well, she started the match with that beautiful one full three out. Can she end 83. it with a ton top? 108. 108 should be easy. Treble 18 for double. Ooh. 40. Well, this was the finish that Daryl Pilgrim won last week on. He went two treble 19s for double 18, but. I was going to go far more conventional and start on the treble 20. And Sherrick should now get two darts at top to win the match. And it's going 60. to be under pressure. This to see what would be a third win from four. 20. But two match darts have come and gone and Harold is back. 50. A reprieve for Harold. 10 for tops. Some dark that. Fifth leg, James Hurl. To navigate around that blocker. It is the, Sixth leg, James, to the throw breaker first. throw. We'll need Game on. another breaker throw to win the match if it goes to a seventh and deciding leg. One hundred. Check with two darts at tops to get the job done. They've come and they've gone. How is she going to respond? Ninety-nine yep. yep. to find a max in the match. One hundred and twenty-five. And it feels like a real reversal of his first couple of games, where it looks like Cowell's going into it as it goes along. One hundred. One hundred. Fifty-eight. So a set up from one seven six to send us to a last leg decider. Sherrick has already come out the other side 16. on the right side of one of them against Adam Lipscomb in the fifth game of the session. And it looks as if she might be pulled to the brink again. James Irohar, 116. 16. All about leaving it handy from here for Harvel. 84. And he's going to leave himself on double 16 to send us to a last leg decider. 
but this visit has changed the complexion of the leg considerably. 140. James required 32. Two from seven on the doubles for Harrell. Sixteen. Fallon, you require forty-six. Three chances to get the game done have come and gone, and so now Sherrock wants tops to seal the victory. She's already had a couple for the match. Six. And two more have gone by the bye. James, you require yeah, sixteen. That's four match darts for Fallon. Game shot on the sixth leg. Not James. Not gonna get Hall. another. Well, not in this leg. But it does have the darts in the decider. Seventh and final leg, Fallon to throw first. Game on. Big leg incoming. Howell wins. There will be three players tied on four points. 100. And Henderson has a cushion at the top, which can be extended when he takes on Moreno Michaels. He can actually open up a potential on day one four point buff. 100. Trading tons. 99. Start of this seventh and deciding leg. 99 for Fallon. Sixty four. Fifty eight. Looked a bit tight, those, didn't they? Pressure playing its part. One hundred. Very unlucky turn that. Yeah, three well thrown darts. One hundred and thirty four. Just when we thought things were beginning to get a little bit edgy from Fan and Sherrick's perspective, she pulls in a one three four to leave herself first to a finish and what pressure could be applied by Harvel? 100. He's a self on 137, but Sherrick first poke at the 110 to get the job done. She started the game for 143 checkout. Well, she's got 101 left, so the trouble 17 would have left ball. 46. Mm, James left herself with work to do. If she gets a go. If she gets a go. To win the game in style. It's double 10 for Hull. shot. And the match the hill Billy with the haymaker blow to get the better as Fan and Sherrick by four legs to three. Sherrick started for one four three checkout. Hubble's completed the job with a one three seven. A bizarre game of darts. Hubble the victor for three to get his second victory of the group. It means that John Henderson can move himself four points clear at the top of the table if he can get the better Moreno Michels after this short break.
Wow, well, we have just seen a superb 137 checkout from James Hurrell to come through a decider against Fallon Sherrick. He joins Fallon on four points. Moreno Michels is up next, and he's having a very steady debut day here at the Super Series. He's two wins from three, actually delivered his worst display of the day last time out. Mr. Levin at double, but still got over the line 4-2. He takes on the table topper, John Henderson, who's looking to make it four wins from four. He put in his best finishing display of the day so far to beat Fallon Sherrick 4-0 last time out. What can he produce in this one? Let's find out in the company of Henry and Chris. Thank you very much, Abby. So Moreno Michels against John Henderson. Henderson, who can really, really take control of the group now. If he can make it four wins from four, well, he knows that no matter what happens, he's going to be the man to catch when Moreno it comes to Tuesday. First. And Game on. you get the sense with Hendo that once he takes control of the group, he's at the top of the group, it's going to be very hard to chase him down. And so Moreno... 96. Well, we didn't quite know what to expect from him coming into this. But what we have seen so far, there's been some promising signs, that has to be said. Absolutely. 140. I certainly feared the worst for him coming in to this particular group. 100. Didn't really feel like it was a, a group that you could sort of play yourself into form and, and get away with it, but credit to him. He's won two of his three. 135. Good wins over James Harrell. 100. And Adam Lipscomb. Ninety-seven. We've seen how easy it is for you to get separated in this group early, and just gotta not let your head drop. Gotta keep grafting. One hundred and forty. John, you require one hundred and twenty-nine. Can't finish. One twenty left. Yeah, he gives that a, a bit of a look, as if to say, well, "What are you doing 89. there?" Eighty-nine. Marino, you require sixty-five. Pressure to hold. Finds the 25. Game shot of the Perfect. first leg. Moreno Michels. 14 data to start. And for those who may have thought this may be a bit of a possession for the Throfers. Scots have been kind of proved wrong. Now, the bookmakers had Michels as a 2-1 to one outsider to win this game. They had Henderson 8-11 to 11 before the off. 80. One hundred. Yeah, six to four, one to two. Literally seconds before the match started. One hundred and forty. Fifty-seven. Cantona against Lipscomb to follow. One hundred. A little bit of money for Cantler. He's four to seven. This comes five to four. Effective on the day. One hundred and play so far. Yeah, they've had a little nibble on it. Forty-one. Already cleaned up there, Henderson, and so Michelle's has got the opportunity to. Really press home advantage here. One Hit a max to lead double 12 nine. after 12 and forcing He's Henderson to take this out. Otherwise his throw may well be broken. And it's not going to happen for the Highlander. Sixty-six. Moreno, you require right, 20. Double 12 for the break of throw and a 2-0 lead. One hundred. Yeah, didn't make the adjustment with Dart 2 and 74. completely over-adjusted with Dart 3. Hitting the big 9 to leave 15. 42 leaves 32. 42. Can he kiss that off the barrel? Game yes, is the answer. So, John what, what? Henderson. Michelle has had the opportunity to 
Uh, put up a 2-0 lead. Had three clear darts at double 12 to do exactly that. Oleg Moreno so to throw first. Game on. Henderson back level. In the game he should be two down in. Yeah, it's one of those that feels like a break even though it's a hold. 140. Michelle's kicks off ton 40. One hundred and eighty. Second one. One hundred and thirty-one. Yeah, this one's warming up quite nicely. Moreno averaging just a tick under one hundred and eight. Henderson 60. up until that video was averaging one hundred and three. It's a ton on the nose. As you can see here. 100. Tun needs to want to finish on 130. Henderson looking to leave himself on one himself. Could find his second max of the leg. One Does find his second max of the leg. Marino require 130. Yeah, 180, 60, 180. But trouble 20 and ball. Oh, dear. 82. John Yorvoir, 81. Left himself handy, just in case. 12 leaves ball. 56. Now just 25 wire, so Michel's to put himself 2 on in front. He's had opportunity to win every single leg so far. Game shot on the third leg, Moreno. 2-1, all with throw so far, the Dutchman in front. Yeah, despite fourth leg, John to throw first. Two one eight is in the leg from Hendo. One hundred and forty. One hundred. Eighty-one. Sixty. Elsewhere in the world of darts, Bay Van Peer winning that Swedish Masters event that we were talking about earlier, beating Liam Mendel Lawrence in that final by Six legs to five. And Bo Greaves won the two. 140. Ladies' titles, didn't she, over the weekend? Dominating that WDF circuit was. Thomas Junghans won the Swedish Open. The Miracle Max Man. 100. Being Darren Johnson in that final by six legs to four. Darren, of course, in action this week. Coming into... 140. John, you require 80. Week three. Series five in some form. Over the weekend, Luke Littler played 30 matches in five tournaments. His running average, 95.87. That's bonkers. Game, John That's the top. John That's Henderson. two, two. That's a 15 data for John Henderson. The average is 103 and 102. This is a high Good quality counter. To first. Game on. Yeah, proper game of darts this one so far. One hundred and thirty-four. One hundred. Yeah, look, they lower twice. Defending champion. In matter of fact, I apologise to Conan Whitehead here straight away. 121. Conan Whitehead's the only player not to successfully defend his title because Raymond Smith won it but hasn't come back from Australia since. So, 96. imagine a hypothetical where Raymond Smith and Luke Littler in adjoining weeks qualify for Champions Week and they both meet at Champions Week. They'll be, two, be the lineal champion against the defending champion. 100. Technicalities. Technicalities. Sounds like I'm straying into the ventures of your sport there. 
93. Moreno, you require 146. Boxing's in the cars, you mate. Thirty-four. One hundred. Both players are one twelve after twelve. Michelle's a first poke. We'll stay there. We'll give him a dart at double sixteen. Forty-seven. Anderson looking for exactly 112. the same target. Exactly the same equation. But he neither can find the treble with the second dart. And so Michelle's the put himself free to up. And to be the first Ready player has to be said to pile any kind of will-surmountable pressure upon John Henderson today. It's going to be tops. Game and Hendo the fifth leg. Moreno, is Michel. up against the rack. Michelle's is on the hill. Six leg John to Averages near identical. 99.82 for Moreno. 99.25 for John Henderson. 119. 119. Example of how good this has been from Moreno. He's had seven darts at a double to Hendo's four. It's a bit like that old tongue twister, isn't it? 55. Playing well is Michel's by the seashore. Creative. 55. You always told me to bring out my creative side. 100. Ninety-nine. Now Henderson six starts and two two seven to send us all the way to a deciding leg. Ninety-three. I've only had a couple of them, and both have involved Fallon Sherrick winning one against Adam Litzgum and losing the last oh, game against James no, Hubble by that no, margin. Although that could be easy. rendered Jungle irrelevant as Michelle piles the pressure on with a max. Ninety-four, one eighty. Moreno, you're twenty-seven. Was a little different. But it worked. Shot and the match. As Moreno, Moreno Michaels, Michaels pulls off a real shock win. It was a convincing win. Four legs to two with an average of ninety-nine point eight nine. His best TV performance prior to playing in this Super Series. An average just over 83. And the unbeaten run of John Henderson comes to an end and he's joined on six points by Moreno. Up next, Marco Cantela against Adam Lipscomb.
Adam Lipscomb returns to action next, still searching for his first victory of the day. We said before a dart had been thrown today that he's been getting better with every visit to the Super Series. Can he recapture that form that has previously seen him feature in finals nights? Henry and Chris, what are we predicting in this one? Well, I'd say a cantaloupe win just on the basis of what we've seen. But <laughs> After the last match, predicting nothing. Because that was a coupon buster. I can hear dockets getting shredded. I predict another game of darts. Yeah, that was First most definitely to throw one first. for the bookies, the last Come one. On. I say he was two to one. Moreno. And he now joined top of the table. 60. Just to go back to the beginning of the day, Moreno was 8 to 1 to win the group. Now, you'd expect no matter what happens now, those odds to 60. come flooding back in. And in terms of the week, he was 12s. Won't be now. Eleven. But that win for Moreno is also a victory you sent to pretty much 16. everybody else in the group because Henderson with a win there would have gone four clear and already would have set his stall out as far as the group's concerned. Yeah, well, you sort of get to that point where you feel like you can start to control and just keep gapping the rest of the field. 134. This is the final match of the fourth cycle of games. So all the players after this one will have oh, one to play. Starting with Moreno against Fallon. Then Adam will be back in action against James Hurrell. And then Hendo and will play Cantela in the final match. 60. One hundred and twenty-one. On two on to leave him on eighty after twelve against the darts, and this has been a surprisingly sluggish start from the fin. One hundred and forty. Adam second at one eighty of the day. That's his top Angel shooting. Very leg. good. Adam Break it for one nil. Fifteen dart leg. For baby boy. Second leg, Adam, to throw first. Game on. Elaborate. That's his nickname. Baby boy. Baby boy. Okay. Just to really hammer home the point, the back of his shirt has him with a nappy on it. One hundred and eighty. As Cantler, it's his first max of the match. Eighty-one. There we go. There's Adam Litzcombe in a nappy. Ninety-six. Things I'd ever expected to say. He's been one of those players, Adam, who's gone around the local 45. circuits. Harbored a lot of success, plays against the likes of Simon Whitlock. Harbors a lot of victories on a lot of occasions against those types of players and merited his opportunity here at the Super Series and has got better every single time he is here. And actually playing here 133. kind of opened up and broadened his horizon somewhat. He's now playing darts and the types of the Q school in 95. terms of Challenge Tour and other types Arbor of competitions. Playing against the best has fueled the fire for Adam Lipscomb. Down for 16s. Have one of them. 52. Sets tops up. Eighty-four. 
Marco, you require 40. Tots are 1-1. One, one. Tots on fail for 1-1. One, one. 13 dart break for Marco Cantela. Yep, super response. Third leg, Marco to throw. Both players hitting Game on. 180s in their breaks of throw. Eighty-five. Well, nobody puts baby in the corner, but Adam Lipscomb might find himself in a little bit of a hole if he loses this game. Forty-five. He's here points after four. He'd be at least four points behind the rest of the field. You're already looking at possibly the battle to have group B darts be something you're going to have to achieve by having good Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Just a reminder for those of you who are new to us here at the Super 70. Series. Top place player will progress through to Saturday night's finale. Taylor and Third will play in Group B on Thursday and Friday nights. So they've got the advantage of an evening session, which begins at 10. Three spots through to the final from five players there. And then the fourth, fifth, sixth place players will play in an afternoon 100. session. One o'clock on Thursday and Friday for two spots and six. And when you've got Scott Baker in that Group C, you know you are going to have to play some good stuff. 140. He could wipe you off the hockey in five minutes, literally. Cantler for the first time oh, today in the 30, high 90s in terms of averages. Yeah, that Group B is looking especially tasty with Sean McDonald, Ryan Furness, Scott Marsh. 90, and sir. The positions two and three 58. from this group. That's going to be a very tough Group B. Tops. Now, the way his darts light, I was going to say, that may not Adam be a friend. 149. Nixon's going to have to find something out the top draw here, and he's not going to find it by way of the 149. And so Cantler comes back for a 2 1 lead. 97. Marco, you require 40. Ainge on the third leg, Marco Cantler. Two Cantor. one to Marco Cantler. Yeah, trailed one nil. Twenty nine darts Four later. Adam to throw first. Leads Game on. two one. One hundred. Marco Cantler was once upon a time a keen lover of Pokemon. You hacked his Facebook page or something. 134. Now, I did see it. I'm not an avid fan of watching rubbish on television, 16. but whilst skipping through with boredom, I came across this program about those Pokemon cards. Some of them are worth an absolute fortune. There's, there's somebody, and I'm not going to dish them 99. out here and now but there is somebody that works on this production who is absolutely glued to it what the cards or the, the game they literally they, they play pokemon go wherever they go oh didn't didn't know we had any children working here is that next to one <laughs> <laughs> well yeah good point well made <laughs> 98 yeah, walks on to Trooper by Iron Maiden, Marco. Tune. I say that, that's a bit more with you, isn't it? A bit more than Taylor's 140. Swift. Marco, you require 170. Fishing time for Cantler.
95. Adam, you require 151. So come on then, out the gamer. Marco, you require 75. 75 for Cantler. Single 18. Oh, it's only just you could hear the click. 40. Adam, you require 113. Should be trouble 18 here. It's trouble 18. It's now tops. 93. Oh, he's miscounted. He's miscounted. Marco, you require 35. And is that going to be a crucial miscalculation for Adam Lipscomb? He looks up to the heavens. He can't quite believe what he's done. His head's in his hands. And he's put the destiny of this leg into Cantella's hands. You can see him just trying to work it out and how he's managed to miscount. Is it going to be costly? Well, that should be okay. Three. As you could see, complete open bed. Adam, you require 20. Well, the good news is Adam knows how to hit this target in this leg, but not when he needed it. 15. Marco, you require 32. Is it a head gone moment for baby boy? Is he going to get taught a lesson? Cantler himself is two for nine now on the doubles. And 24. they look nervy. Adam, you're a five. No well, score. this is a discombobulation from Lipscomb. Marco, you require eight. Been listening to Ronald McIntosh too often, mate. Discombobulated. Game shot on the fourth leg, Marco Cantella. Got there in the end. Needs 3 Fifth 1. Leg, has the darts for 4 1. Game on. The misery mounts for Lipscomb. Ninety six. Fifty-nine. Cantler starting down, second visit the leg. Indicative of the fact he's not liking the lie upstairs. He's not 47. enjoying the life upstairs. Although it it's a bit of a European trade because in the women's game, Eileen de Graaf starts legs on 19s. If you're not finding it, go somewhere else. <clears throat> and then he decides to go back to the 20s and then fires in a max. Tars is such a silly old game at times. 100. Forty-one. Well, that's just opened up the door for Lipscomb here, and he's going to cram it open. Eighty-five. Marco, you're one hundred and thirty-seven. A few too many stray darts for Adam at the moment. Trouble nineteen for double ten. Well, single 18 leaves top, so Lipscomb's going to have to take out the 117. 97. Adam, you require 117. Break your throw and to keep him in the contest. 
And so Cantler is going to get a go at tops to seal a 4-1 success. And it's going to keep 43. Lipscomb deep-rooted to the bottom of the table. 40. Game. And Shot. Cantler and gets the, the job Schmerkel done. And he is beginning to grow to the task is the fin. Four points to his name. That is two wins now to his name and a 4-1 victory against Adam Lipscomb, an 86.04 average. But uh, there's a couple of caveats to that, mainly because of the leg before. Other than that, it was a fairly solid performance on Cantler. Adam Lipscomb worked to do four games, four defeats. And that is the end of the fourth cycle of fixtures. We kick off with Moreno Michels against Fallon Sherrick after this short break. So then, Moreno Michels and Fallon Sherrick are first to complete their day's play. As you can see, Fallon Sherrick losing out in a last leg decider against James Hurrell last time out. Hurrell taking out a 1-3-7 to get over the line in that one. As for Moreno Michels, well, he pulled off the result of the day so far last time out, getting the better of John Henderson 4-2 with an average just shy of a ton. And we can have a little look at what that does to the league standings. Michels could end the day on eight points if he can get over the line in this one. If not, if the Queen of the Palace can get over the line, she will join Michels and Henderson on six points. So to see who ends their day with a victory, let's get back to the chaps in comms. Thank you very much, Abby. Seconds out, final round on Monday here at the Super Series. Ad Moreno Michel takes on Fallon Sherrick. Victory here for the Queen of the Palace would mean that we'd have a devilish situation at the top of the table. 6-6-6. Six, six, six. Underneath the church. That's a bit frightening, isn't it? First leg, Moreno to throw first. Game on. Well, so far today, the level of play, when you put all their averages in and divide them across four matches, 59. both close to 88. Forty-five. If you had to put ten pence on, which way would it go in your view? Ooh. Forty-one. Well, you can make a case for both, but then you also got to look at not only their best performances, which for Moreno was last time out at ninety-nine, eighty-nine against Henderson, who averaged ninety-eight. Also got to look at the other end of the scale, I suppose. 
where he's putting an average of 76.33. 140. And Fallon, likewise, though with averages of 105. 57. He's also popped in a 71.78. The range has been bigger uh, with Sherry, which can come as both a blessing and a curse at the same time. Yeah, I think the range is far less for, for Moreno. But it's how he deals with the situation. 60. Moreno, your horror, 146. Yeah, he deals with the 146. I'm going to go this time, and so Sheriku. Started her last game against James Hull of a 143 58. checkout. He's looking for another big one here to win the first leg and probably needs to take out the 155, but isn't going to. 93. Moreno, you're Covers the situation 88. well. Puts a little bit of pressure on the 88. <clears throat> she will be back for 62. 37. Alan requires 62. You're going to get one dart, double six. Fifty. And so Shells is fifty-one. Back for fifty-one for the opening leg. He wants tops. Thirty. Down and beneath, and so Sherrod comes back 12. wanting double six to break the throw. That first one was erratic. That Being second one was perfect. Leg, and Sherrick breaks the throw to lead 1-0. Now, second leg Fallon to throw first. I know it's Game only on. day one, but that man on screen there, Moreno Michels, he's giving me Patrick Vanden Bugard vibes. 85. Where when Patrick won his week, nobody was talking about him. He was just going about his business he didn't have any bad performances, 82. but he was in this close quarter range that he was just doing enough to win matches, but was completely going under the radar. And then when it came to the crucial night on 59. Saturday, when other people faltered, that sort of level was enough to get over the line and win. And remember the week that he was in, John Henderson was in it. Jared Cole was in it. Wesley Plazier was in it. 95. Well, he beat Jared Cole in the final, didn't he? And he didn't, he literally did not know where to 100. go after that final as well. He went on a whistle stop tour of the stage before coming over and having a chat. 55. But that's what the ADC Europe are doing, though. They're bringing out gems like him, 81. gems like Jerome Miyoku. Without that criteria and process, Let's be honest, it, we're, we're less than likely going to see 99. here. 99. Well, it gives you an opportunity to find out how good you actually are. It's all right to it with your Pikachu slippers your on, isn't 170. it? 170. Yeah, in your Fortnite pyjamas in your box room. 44. Fallon, you require 76. 2 0. Double eighteen. Forty. Moreno, you're oh, one hundred and twenty. Seen any evidence to think that she won't be back at double eighteen? Ninety eight. Fallon, you require thirty six. Old faithful for Fallon. Double nine. Aim shot Two nil to Sherrick. Fallon Sherrick. Oh, it's not pretty, but it's effective. Two nil. Third leg she Marino would just to throw want first. to end her day Game with on. a win. And she's right in the mix going into tomorrow. 59. 96. I want to look at the players coming into Group B and C because we've run them all over Group A, of course, over the course of the day. Which one of those six players... You looking at and thinking they've got 100. a real, real chance. Sean McDonald, Ryan Finesse, Scott Mars, Sam Cromwell, Darren Johnson, 
and Scott Baker, the players coming into BNC respectively. Yeah, I think Ryan Furness is due to have a, a bit of a run, isn't he? Don't know too much about Sam Cromwell. I will be doing my 45. research on Wednesday for Sam. Who won an ADC qualifier to qualify for the belt match against Scott Marsh? And the good thing about that is at least they know, at least they're going into it in good form. So they, it was the top 32 players in the regional playoff rankings who played in that playoff event. The winner of that gets the chance to take on the defending belt holder for the title. 41. And that will take place at five o'clock here on a Saturday before the Evening session in terms of the Super Series gets underway from half past seven. 96. There'll be a number of regional belts up for offer, but I know the European and international belts will also be up for grabs at some point too. James 100. Richardson and Jared Cole, the two respective holders of them. As Michelle's looks for 156, another one of them would have given him a dart at double 18. 140. Fell in your choir, 101. There's the 60. Double 16 is the choice. 69. Arena, you require 16. Double eight. Off the barrel. Oh, too no far score. down. Fallon, you require And it could be 3 0 down. It's show it can find what Michelle's has just hit. This is getting a bit scrappy. Game shot the third leg. manages to get the job done. Three 0 she leads. Double break accrued, and the game is in the palm of her hands. Fourth leg fell into throw first. Game on. Of course, Darren Johnson will be coming in on high, having made the final over the weekend. One hundred. Him and Martin turn also in the pairs. So, Scott. Scott Baker, as we know, he's just fast and furious, isn't he? And Sean McDonald, solid as a rock. They don't call him the Punisher for nothing. 93. Yeah, you make a mistake, he makes you pay. He's the most mildly mattered man off the hockey, but you get him on it. He is a tenacious tartan tungsten warrior. Terrier. 41. I get my R's in a twist. I'm waiting for the week where someone dumps a group A where every single player has an R in the first and last name. On the Super Series, Jonathan Ross. 100. Edward Woodward would have been a good one for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll struggle with Robert Whitwood. <laughs> 95. Fallon, you require 160. With the game in style. Damage limitation. 41. More Moreno, you require 84. Game shot on the fourth leg. Moreno, Michaels. Hello there. Very clean Fifth finish. Fifth leg, Moreno to throw first. Game on. Is it just a consolation? Is it just a pipe dream leg 35. or is it the beginning of a foundation of which to grow? Ninety-three. Reminder, Adam Lipscomb and James Hubble next, and then John Henderson looking to make it four from five against Marco Cantler to finish up. Eighty two. Ninety-six. Remind well, you, you can get in contact with us at the Super Series on Twitter, Facebook, 100. and Instagram. The handle you need is at MSS Darts. Do send in your comments and your observations, and we'll answer those throughout 96. the course of the week. It's myself and Chris here up until Friday night, and then we're I'm going to do the job swap on the balcony and. 
going to be joined in the company of Law and Turner on Saturday night. I am looking forward to that. Don't recall me. 140. And Laura doing a shift together yet. No, definitely not here. 44. The Fallon requires 76. For the match. 76 for Fallon Show. It's a complete a 4 1 success. It's going to be a dart at tops. And that's all she needs. Fallon Show completes her day with three wins from five. And she is very much in the equation as far as Group A is concerned. A convincing victory against Moreno Michels, who just dragged a little bit below the best form that we've seen from him today. But what we have seen from him on day one are some very positive signs for the week to come. But for Sherrick, a 4-1 victory to round off her day. And we're going to see Adam Litscombe and James Hovell's day come to a culmination on the other side of this short break. Our penultimate game of the day sees James Hurrell return to action, looking to end the day on six points and add to Lipscomb's Monday misery. Hillbilly responding well to losing his opening two games to get the better of Cantella and Sherrick. The latter with a sublime 1-3-7 out to get over the line. To guide you through game 14 of 15, let's get back to H and Mace. Thanks, Abby. Well, if James Hurrell can get out of today on six points... He would oh, be over the moon, Henry. He absolutely would. <clears throat> because, well, actually, there's a bit of a two sides to this coin because in both of his opening two matches, he went 2 nil up, looked in good nick, and then the hillbilly fell off a cliff edge, really, didn't he? Yeah. We are in that scenario, of course, that if Farrell wins this one first. and Cantler Game on. beats Henderson, we'll have five players... All on six points, and Adam Lipscomb, pointless. 60. In the Richard Osman position. He's a darts fan. Big darts fan. Loves his snooks as well, doesn't he? Sure 140. Does. Do I try playing that House of Games show he does. Good luck keeping up with that. Good luck keeping up with the pace of that. Easy. As far as what the odd compilers say, Adam Lipscomb, the big Fierce outsider Lips. at 11 to 8, and James Hubble going in as the 8 to 15 favourite. 95. 
any given if Howell wins this one and he makes it six points, I feel like these are two players here that just want to finish their day, get it done, get out of here, come back tomorrow morning. 79. You won't see motions go through, but they, they both know there's way more to come. Absolutely. This is very much 130 a four. marathon of a group, Group A. And then it's well, uh, 1,500 metres, the Group B and Group C. 79. It's Adam very Moore, much a 32. sprint on Saturday night. Game shot on the first leg. Adam Lipscomb, Lipscomb. sprinting into the lead. Well, that's a 13 dart hold. Very, like like James very tidy. Row first. Question mark I have about the, the back of the Lipscomb show is why does a baby have a tattoo? And a beard. One hundred and Back to Hubble. The begin leg two. Fifty five. Can he continue? Is there a razor free? No is the answer. 60. We saw a nine data last week. Dale Pilgrim notching the perfect leg. Steve West breaking the Conahina hand curse, it seems, a couple of weeks ago at Champions Week. In fact, we've seen it just four times at the Moda Super Series, such is the rarity of the feat. Although we did have a period when we were in Southampton where they were raining in off the lampshade. James Richardson, the first to 32. do it back in Southampton. James Uruguay, 121. 121. Starting on the ball with Adam way back on 314 is the right 47. play. 47. Eighty five. James Uruguay, 74. A piece. Single, double, 34. Just above. Twenty nine. James Uruguay, forty. Fifty nine. James Uruguay, forty. Game shot on the one, second one. leg. James Hurrell. Tops found for sixteen data. We'll go in with throw thus far. Third leg Adam to throw first. Game on. 43. Call of game on for Mark. Referee Danny McNamara, our top Irish official. Around uh, County Cork, I believe correctly. Yep, beautiful. 29. Part of the Emerald Isle. You must have some stories there. I do. 60. None of which I can discuss on air. There he is, Danny Mack, who's back in the fold today. One of our 100. top team of referees, including the likes of Charlie Cortefine, Paul Hinks. Don't admit Owen. You know he'll only get salty. 120. Owen's also a referee here. <laughs> One of the PDC's top markers. 97. Two sugars, please, Owen. 97. We're truly back, aren't we, mate? With a bang. 86. Right, Lipscomb looking to set up for 2 1. Tom Foy does exactly that. 14. Double 18 for Lipscomb. And it's been a kind of game that's been dominated by the player on throw thus far, although 
Howell does put some mountable pressure on this, trying to force the mistake. And the mistake has been forced. 28. And so Hubble comes back Ginger for the break of throw and a 2-1 lead. If he can notch the 52. Tops to do exactly that. Can he notch one just below? James yes, is the Hurley. answer. Use James that first Hurley. dart beautifully. Oh, oh, nice trip, James. Fourth leg, James, to throw first. Oh, man. Game on. Oh, Rooney, as the crow flies, probably a mile from Fratton. Don't want to be doing any ACLs. Did you hear about the incident at Fratton Park on Saturday? No. 40. There was 21 minutes of injury time at the end of the second half. Wow. Because two 95. match officials got injured. So the first linesman got injured. They could be replaced by the fourth official. But the fourth official that then became the linesman got injured himself on the same touchline. And so they had to get a PA, PA call to the crowd 140. to ask for someone to run the line. Brilliant. So Danny at 95. the minute is the longest standing referee that we've seen in Porsa for any sport for about four days. Eighty-one. John O'Shea, been in touch. Spot on. What happens in court stays in 28. court. Twenty-eight. We'll leave it at that then. That's a beautiful first start. One hundred. So 140 for Howell to open up a 3-1 lead. And after Ginger what was a fairly positive start from Adam Lipscomb, it's just kind of unraveled from there. Another one of them would have left double 10, but he'll lay 100. up for the straight ton to leave himself on tops. One hundred. James he put himself a leg 40. away from victory. Game Tops is converted James for the Hillbilly. 3-1, 16 data, and Adam Lipscomb here on throw. Needs three on the spin. Fifth leg, Adam, to throw he's first. to stay Game in on. the contest. And if he picks up his first win of the day, it's aligned on a comeback win. 82. Of course, the Pro Tour returns this weekend in Hildesheim. Players' Championship 17 and 18. Followed by the Euro Tour 11 and 12 56. qualifiers. Good luck to John O'Shea over there and all the rest of the lads. 83. And it's getting to the stage of the season where we're taking very close interest or closer interest than perhaps we were previously because, well, we're getting to the stage of the season now 60. where we're looking... At the tour card race and players that will drop out of the equation on the PDC Pro Tour 100. and will be eligible if they don't win it back at Q School to play here. Yep. Yeah, so we'll get a new, <coughs> completely new group of players. <coughs> and have a little listen of these names 100. Ted Everts, Steve Lennon, Florian Hempel, Connor Scott, Kevin Doitz, John O'Shea. Bradley Brooks, Richie Burnett, Darius Labanowskis, Louis Williams, Scott Rates, Jess Smith, all players outside the cut zone. Ninety five. Adam Requiring ninety six. To pull one back. Game, the Back to 3-2, but Hull has good. the darts here to complete the job. Adam's two winning legs have been very Six tidy. Leg to throw first. 13 Game and off. 15, it's just the bit in the middle of that. 100. James Harrell with the darts to get over the line. 4-2. And then coming up in September... 
World Series of Darts Finals in 140. Amsterdam. I'll be there with the TV team. It's one of your favorite 140. Stand, it? It's an incredible arena. And we're not too far off the Grand Prix, 2nd to the 8th of October. 83. And then it's the European Championships in Dortmund. Then we're into the Grand Slam. And then the Players' Championship 45. Finals, of course, down at Minehead in Butlins. Always a great event, that one. And then, before we know it, 85. Be the World Championship starting on the 15th of December. Now the Paddy Power World Darts Championships. Howell powering on potentially to get the game done in next to no time at all. So 93 for Howell to Ginger get the job done by four legs to two and to pick up what would be his third win of the day and to leave Adam Lipscomb stranded at the bottom of the pile. 53. Leaves top if he gets a go. Lipscomb needs a Hail Mary 108. And isn't going to get a go at double. A double. So Hubble for the win. Games you require It's a 40. double for Hubble. And let's go with being trouble. Level 16 Game to complete shot. the job. And, the match. and that James is three wins from five as far as James Hull was concerned. Adam Lipscomb's first day couldn't really have gone any worse. Five defeats from five. He has got it all to do on Tuesday and Wednesday just for a group B spot. Lipscomb defeated 4 2 by the Hillbilly, who averaged 87 and change. Four out of seven when it came to the doubling. And coming up after the break, our final game of the day. John Henderson, the table topper, can assert his authority going two points clear of the ta at the top of the table if he beats Marco Cantler next. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where this man stood next to me has just made it three wins on the spin to end the day on six points. James, after the way you started today's play, how do you reflect on the day as a whole? Uh, absolutely massive six points for me, to be fair, the way I started. And 
was so tired when I got here because I come travelling back from Sweden. Didn't get to bed till quarter to four this morning and then travelled down this morning. So, yeah, very happy, yeah. Yeah, and with your first two matches, took a 2-0 lead in both of them, lost them 4-2. What was going through your mind after that second match? <sighs> Doubles. Uh, yeah, it was just tiredness. I started off like, really good in the games and just d d died away at the second half of it. So, yeah, really happy with the six points, to be fair. And it's something to build on tomorrow, isn't it? But how much do you draw on your experience? Because you know, in Group A, it doesn't really matter too much what happens on the Monday because it is a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, definitely. Monday, yeah, just get your head around things and that then Tuesday and Wednesday kick in, hopefully. And you must be chomping at the bit to get a full week this time round, having only got the Thursday and Friday in the last series. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yes. Yeah, amazing. So, yeah, week's perfect for me. And how important was that 137 out against Fallon Sherrick oh. to get over the line in that decider? That felt huge. Yeah, absolutely massive, because we, we, we played pair, uh, counting together in the same team and everything. So, yeah, close game all the way through, but managed to get over the line just in the end. And just finally, <laughs> we want to check, are you feeling all right? Because something <laughs> happened in your last game. We're just going to remind you of that now, because we're quite mean here at the Super Series sometimes. Just decided to take another trip. That trip to Copenhagen wasn't quite enough for you, was no, it? No, no, no. The fancy did another one. That was all. Yeah, um, just s slipped off the side of the hockey, that's all. Well, very best of luck tomorrow. We'll make sure we've got some knee pads for you. Right, we do have one more game to go. Can John Henderson end the day at top of the table? Let's find out and hand back to our commentary team. Thank you very much, Abby. Yeah, that was cruel, wasn't it? Although... I bet Jane Sarr really did enjoy that trip from the famous Swedish city of Copenhagen. Oh, well, the 137 was a little crueler. He did dodge a bullet there. Fallon having four match darts across two different legs. But as we mentioned, Henry, we do have a, a rare chance here to see five players... Only separated on to throw by leg difference because if Cantler can get a win here against Henderson, Henderson, Sherrock, Hurl, Michels, and Cantler will all be on six points. Now, I've 62. seen a lot of things in this building over the last year or so. So have I. <laughs> but I haven't seen that. No. Well, it, it will be unexpected because. Henderson's the two to five favourite. Forty one. Seven to four is Cantala. Eighty. And of course, this game, perhaps one of the most important jewels in the group, because this is the one that ends day one, but the fixtures flip. It's like Missy Elliott. One hundred. We reverse it. And it'll be the first game of game of day two tomorrow where Cantler will have the darts. Yeah, and we've seen how influential that can be in 100. terms of how the group plays out. Sixty four. One hundred and twenty one. Henderson first to finish on one three eight. One hundred and twenty five. Good visit, but not left to finish. One short of that, so two visits for Henderson to get rid of the one three eight and hold. Seventy eight. One hundred and thirty one. John, you require sixty. Single, double, double ten, forty. Was that good pressure? You require forty from Cantela. Going to pay dividends. Clear. 
clips it audibly close. Thirty. But because of the way his darts go into the board, he's better off having John, a flying above first 20. dart than one close to the wire. Double ten. The perfect Angel sight of the Hustler, second dart, John and he Henderson. worked it to perfection, did John Henderson. He leaves Marco Cantler by a leg to nil, and Cantler doing so what like every single day return at the Super Series does. Gets a bit too eager in for him first. We have a 10 second stop clock between legs here at the Super Series. It's, it's really unique to this competition. You don't have 83. it in any other competition in world darts. It does take time to adjust to. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll let our viewers in a little seat. Do you remember the old venue when they had the traffic light? <laughs> um, someone's job was to click a button on and off to signal the start and end of the leg with a traffic light. It was like the lollipop man on the... Uh... In Germany. <laughs> 41. It was a tailor-made job for someone. 140, 140 for Henderson. 40. I was never asked you to do that, pushing buttons. Oh, no, not for me. <laughs> 100. I've, I've tried spotting. Didn't like that at all. Not one for technology, me, Henry. One hundred. Endo's one for the maximum hitting. It's the first of this match. On for a potential eleven dart break of throw is Hendo. But it's going to be under pressure. Cantler leaving himself on a finish. Twelve will do. Triple 12, these double 13. Oh, Angel yes, John Henderson. John Henderson sneaks into the bottom corner, but it's a 2 0 lead over 12 dart leg. Third leg, John to throw first. Game on. He's halfway there, is the Highlander now. 100. And, he ha and it'd be a fair reflection on the day if he's the player at the top of the table as well. Yep, just about. 96. We will crunch the numbers yesterday and um, tomorrow. And we'll see who the best player is from today. 196. If Henderson goes on to win this game, would Cantler be the only player aggrieved with his positioning and points tally in the table? Yeah, I'd say he's played better than the, the four points he's potentially going to end up with. For sure. Henderson's getting his skates on. 60. One hundred and forty. The players leave themselves on a finish. Endo first poke of the one sixty one. Not to be. And so can Cantler go fishing in the Super Series Lake? No. So Hendo will be frozen Rebel over. One hundred and seventy. Two trouble twenties. Not to be, and so Henderson is back for a 3-0 lead. 62 points required. 42. John, you require 62. To put himself a leg away from the victory post. Forty-two. Right, just below Cantler. Michael, you require one hundred and twenty-eight to get the break. And to keep himself in the game, you feel. Trouble 20 leaves ball. 
to do just that. Forty-two. John, you're required. Double ten. 20. And you feel from three 0 up. Henderson isn't relinquishing the lead. Game. Three nil. Henderson. Leg. John Henderson. A leg away from putting in a fourth win from five on his first day at the Super Series. Fourth leg, Merkel to throw first. Game on. Cantler has to climb the highest of all high mountains now. 44. Just a reminder that if you've missed any of the action here at the Super Series, you can tune in to our highlights package released at the end of every single session on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to drop that a sub where you can tune in to all of the action every single day. It's exclusively live on the YouTube channel tomorrow from 9.30. On top of that, you can watch back, well, some of the brilliance from Daryl Pilgrim last week. 83. Both the record averages, the nine data, exclusive interviews with him, all available on there. Also got the first part of our brand new Mason Meat series 55. as he sat down with Mark Dubridge. So plenty of content available via the Modus Super Series YouTube channel. Do give us a subscribe and don't forget if you are on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, we are at MSS Darts. And you will not miss a dart. 125. Here with us. Cantler providing ample oh, pressure, but Henderson no, just no, shrugs no, it off with a max. Easy. Sixty. Six starts on two three three to complete the job four nil. And just look at the rock, look at the 140. groove. 140. When he gets that set and set to perfection, he is such a tough customer to beat. He's only been beaten once today. That was by Moreno Michels by four legs to two. And there wasn't really much he could have done about that one. John, you require 93. To complete a nigh on perfect day. To kick start his campaign here at the Super Game Series. Shot. Double and 18 is found. Henderson. And the Highlander hits the heights on day one of Group A. As John Henderson beats Marco Cantler by four leg to nil. Doing so a 95-43 average. Four out of nine when it came to the doubling. He is the man at the top of the pile. It is Hendo at the summit. But he has got a chasing pack in behind him. So result on the final game sees John Henderson get the better of Marco Cantela by four legs to nil. Yeah, comprehensive victory from John Henderson to round off his opening day's play. He ends the day on eight points, but that's not really a reflection of how he's played all day, is it? Because his finishing in his opening two games left quite a bit to be desired. Yeah, he got away with a couple, but finishes off the day with, for me, probably his best performance of the day across the board in terms of scoring and finishing. And that sets him up lovely tomorrow because that will be the first game tomorrow morning and well, Marco will be dwelling on that scoreline overnight. Yeah, let's have a look then at the results from today. And that James Hurrell victory over Fallon Sherrick, a sublime 1-3-7 out to get over the line in that one. That felt significant at the time. Any other standout for you? Yeah, I agree. I think that completely has changed his day and his approach to, to Tuesday and Wednesday. Of course, as he mentioned in that interview with you, he'd been travelling throughout the night. So... A little bit sleep deprived, knows how we feel most of the time. But yeah, I mean, the, the only real disappointment for me today was Adam Lipscomb. He just, he just, there was flashes, but he couldn't sort of put it all together across one match. And well, for him now, it's all about Group C. Yeah, as a result of that James Hurrell problem, then, if you like, last night, getting his flight back over here, do you think we'll see a higher level from him overall tomorrow? Yeah, I would hope so. I would hope so. I mean, he started off those matches so well and then just completely went missing. Well, well, when you're tired, sometimes you, like I say, you can sort of start to force things, and if the, the brain's not connecting with the arm, that's what can happen. But um, 
Yeah, overall, listen, he's, he's, he's dodged a bullet there. To get away with six points in the end, only two off the lead, is, uh, is very useful. Yeah, and Adam Lipscomb, just a word on him. He ends the day without any points to his name. We just saw that miscount from him there as well. I think by the end of the day, he just started to capitulate slightly, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, and, and we've see, we see it so often, don't we? When you sort of get separated from the group and you've not got a win... It, you know, it, there's so much emphasis on getting that first win so you feel like you're involved and it, it's going to be a tough couple of days for him. It, it, you can almost see he's trying too hard and, and sometimes when you're you, you, you're sort of trying too hard, you lose focus and that's why you miscount. Yeah, someone who certainly hasn't lost focus today is John Henderson. He's chatting now to Henry Deacon. John, I spoke to you at the start of the day with a smile on your face. So I speak to you at the end of the day with a smile on your face. Four wins from five, just your assessment of the day. It was oh, it was hard, don't get me wrong, it was very hard, but I, I felt as though I played all right. Probably the best game I played all day was the one I lost, if I'm being an averages wise, but no, you just come in here, you're playing against good players, I, did have, I, I do what I need to do, and hopefully I can continue with that tomorrow. Did you feel like in a group like this that's very competitive, you had to hit the ground running straight away? Definitely, uh, it, it, it's, it's some big names here, I can obviously say James Hurrell and... Uh, uh, Farland's there as well, uh, and I'm playing two player. I've, I've played recently, yeah, recently in the, the back mm -hmm. end of uh, TV events, and Marco and Marino, and I don't know much about Adam, but uh, he's a local lad. But no, I knew it was oh, every game's hard, and I've went in here think just the same as every game. But uh, no, I'm happy the way I've come out of one defeat, and uh, obviously the the one defeat's probably my best game. But uh, no, fair play, fair play. I'm playing well. And day one, of course, nothing's wrong, but you can really set yourself in the week, can't you, for a day like this? Oh, definitely. It's we're all, we, we all want to get to that top spot on Wednesday night. There's no question about that. But uh, no, tomorrow's a new day. We're all uh, we're all hungry for what we're doing. But no, I'm hungry for this. I'll come in like the same the same way I did the day, and hopefully it goes my way. Well, good day today. We look forward to watching you tomorrow, John. Well done. Cheers, Henry. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, great to hear from Hendo there. Just one final question on him. We have been talking a bit about his inconsistencies of late. Do you think that could have anything to do with the fact he said himself this year he's playing more darts now than when he had a tour card? Do you think that could be playing some kind of part? Yeah, possibly. But when, as a player, you want to be playing as much as possible. You've got to sort of pick your, your windows to have some downtime and just sort of reflect on things and then work on areas of your game. What can happen when you're playing all the time is you don't have enough time to then work on those parts and it may have been the finishing for him because you know his, his last series of, of the challenge tour events he just you know he was sort of averaging mid 80s and we know he's a, a far better player than that and that maybe he's just coming out of a, a bit of a slump in form I mean there was spells today he looked very good and just finally a word on Fallon Sherrick as well because she's one of three players on six points took out a 143 as well today treated us to the highest average of the day as well 105 and a half what did you make of her overall yeah I think she'll, she'll be the one that feels aggrieved the most not to be on eight points really because she had two opportunities to beat James Hurrell in different legs two darts in each leg and well he, he pulled out a tremendous finish to win the match don't get me wrong but uh, that was one that she really should have won yeah let's just remind you then of how things stand after the opening days play in group a 15 games played and it's john henderson who leads the way a really healthy leg difference as well plus 11 to go with his eight points accrued today but moreno michels what an impressive debut day from him the only player to have got the better of john henderson how do you see him building on that tomorrow because sometimes we do see don't we players can have a really good debut day but then they fall off when that adrenaline starts to fall away as well yeah i think he'd be over the moon listen there was nothing to suggest he was playing that well coming into this uh, this week but I, th I thought he's been outstanding i mean there is a big big range to between his good stuff and very good stuff um that he'll have to tweak over the next couple of days but he's right in the mix for a for a place in group b he certainly is so after day one it is john henderson who leads the way at the top of the table we'll be back from 9 30 tomorrow to see how moving day unfolds make sure you come and join us then